hours of the morning, while the city sleeps, an uncommon band of heroes unites to fight the forces of evil. The Obi and Anthony Show. Oh, my sweet Jesus. With Op Op. I want to be known as Notorious. No. Ack Ack. Everyone is always in my way. Oh, you really are deluded. And B Cup. Kind of fat breasted and awful. And surrounded by dullards. Ben looks like poorly spliced film. Oh, it's hilarious. Remember Steve Yawns? It looks like the back of the Batmobile and it excites. <laughs> Pocketosis. Eric, you're not going to cry. <laughs> Shut up! And on with superhuman powers. He pulls his pants down and just starts leaking into someone's garbage can. That's rule one. How about if he gives you the old chin tap with his helmet? That's all right with me. They are living among us. Average citizens, average heroes, quietly and anonymously continuing to make the world a better place. Controversial talkers Opie and Anthony. We are just oh, dick. You better just sit back and watch. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what? The Opie and Anthony Show. Oh, but enough of this palaver. Let's get the show on the road. Oh, that's good. Echo's usually We're not good. on the radio. We're not on the radio. Radio. No. Radio. 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 I'm on a mix. I'm on a mix. Mac- radio. Let's start Ben Nuts. Hey, we're live on the crazy horse. Oh, and a little echo. That's good. There we go. Back to normal. Now we must be on, and everything's fine we and good? dandy. We're good. Uh, we had uh, slight technical problems, but we're broadcasting live. Nationwide, right, from Bourbon Street in New Orleans, it's Opie and Anthony and Jim hey. Norton at the Crazy Horse Strip Club. Of okay. course, it wouldn't be complete without an opening uh, clusterfuck. <laughs> so, yeah, we're, we're on now, and uh, yeah, that's where we are. We're right here on Bourbon Street. We've been sitting up here for about an hour before the show started, watching the debauchery, watching the people uh, shuffle by, watching drunken Tom throw beads at uh, women. Yeah, I don't even know where to begin. We got Tom from New Orleans. He's here. We're gonna of get him. Of course, we're saddled with him another year. Uh, he's already <laughs> like offering us mushrooms and. Hey, but keep that on the DL. Yeah, keep that on the DL, and also I'm gonna bring you boys to a strip club where they give you BJ's or something. What was he saying? I know a strip club where you go in back and off is upstairs. Yeah. And they'll give you a BJ up there for real. I'm not kidding around. We'll go there later. I was like, Tom, how about just a high? We haven't seen you yeah, live. Yeah, I'm two pretty three high. Years. What do you want from me? The guy is such a drunkard. He every time he comes over, I don't even have to. I don't even have to look around to see if he's around me. Yeah. Do you notice the aroma that follows Tom? Yeah. It's brute by Fabergé and beer, <laughs> and that that mixture is uh, it's Tom. When he comes by, you smell him before you see him. And uh, there's a there's a teeth update with Tom. His, oh yes. His teeth are horrendous, but they don't smell as bad as last time. Right. Anyone else notice? I kind of backed my head away. I haven't gotten close enough yet. Yeah, because he's still a you know a close talker, but at least we're not getting the real bad rotting teeth. Oh my bad god. Bad breath thing. No, his teeth. It looks like a beach in Phuket. <laughs> Just mud and trees and human waste. <laughs> He's just going to pick, uh, pick the stuff between his teeth, and that's the mushrooms we're doing later. Those are the mushrooms. <laughs> I cure them here in my choppers. <laughs> what a scene, They like though. to grow in a dark, dank place. <laughs> this is a crazy scene. We have so many Opie and Anthony fans stopping by already. Where were those two guys with the, uh, the Monster Rain signs? They're and right the, below us. Where are the signs? Is that where they are? Yeah, Monster Rain. Yeah. And they have another one that says Banana Phone, ONA, XM, 202. And then one, uh, I guess, for Rick. Uh... <laughs> What did it say? Swim, bitches, swim. Yeah, that's all it says. But yeah, a lot of people, a lot of fans of the show stopping by here in New Orleans. How you doing? Yeah, see, right away. They're all taking pictures of They're us. Snapping pictures. We're on display. We're, we're handing out beads. We're, we got the Mardi Gras panties we're throwing down to the ladies. Um, it is, uh, yeah, quite the scene. And we're going to be here um, partaking in the festivities. Hey, Ben, throw them to somebody we're else. We're not quite. I've noticed we're not quite as tanked as we were uh, last time we came here. No. We were pretty well hammered and gone by the time we even hit the airwaves. I haven't had a drink yet. No, it was uh, the hurricanes that did us in last time. And and the listeners have been talking about our last New Orleans broadcast for years, like how awful it was. So we figured maybe we'll at least try to do a broadcast today. I got uh, Sorry, Obi, I have a Pats fan that's yelling at me right now. 
Dude, I said the Pats were going to win. I absolutely gave it to you guys. I said the Pats were going to win, too. And of course. Who didn't think the Pats are going to win? He's jumping around like Ben. Yeah. Well, speaking of Ben, we got to talk about Ben. Ben, just before we went on the air, I think that's why we had technical problems. Ben sneezed all over himself, and it, and it was all over his glasses, too. What the hell happened? He, he, you sneezed into your hand, and he blew snot, and it was actually connecting his nose to his glasses. <laughs> his glasses were covered. <laughs> his face had a miscarriage. <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to get Ben's mic on. I, I can't hear you, Ben. Mess. He was a mess. He sneezed. He just had snot all over. His, his lenses looked like Bourbon Street. <laughs> it was a mess. Because he had that a mouthful was... of cheese and, and, like, ham sandwich. Yeah, well, he was, I was eating. was eating, and we didn't have much time because Kenny got back with the sandwiches so late. And I, I was eating, I sneezed, and it was food went all over my face. <laughs> and then I got Tom behind me trying to, he knocked my head with beads. He's really a pro, Tom, at getting the girls <laughs> to perform for the beads. He yeah. won't just throw them down. He's yelling at girls, come on, show you me, show me your titties. Just show me one. I'll throw you the beads here. He's an animal with these beads. But the problem is, he has no discretion. He wants the yes. fatties to show as well. And it's oh, like... my God. The girl he got to show just before we went on the air, she had to be about 350 pounds. With no boobs. A slob with no boobs. She was what we call a flatso. flatso. Yeah, yeah. All, all belly, no oh. boob. And uh, he got it a flash. Not that we, we wanted to see it, but... He's a professional. He's here every year. He knows the drill. It's like fishing. He has all sorts of beads. He's got the really cheap ones for, like, the 10-year-old girls where you can't, like, have them show anything, obviously. Yeah, then he throws the cheap ones down. I've noticed right. there are a lot of girls. Ben was throwing, like, panties down to, to, to a girl that was about 12 years old. <laughs> ben had no clue. Like, stop. What are you doing with her? She and did have a nice ass. Though. And then Tom has the really nice beads, and he has, his, uh, he has the Mac Daddy of beads yeah. around his neck that he's waiting for. Uh -huh. He almost got uh, a girl to show, you know, the clam for the, the, the beads that he had around his yeah, neck. Yeah, he gets girls to uh, show their boobs, and then he goes for the snatch. All right, who's the racist up here on, on the balcony? That's all I want to ask. Why, what? I'm just noticing a pattern here. Yeah. When the when the black uh, chicks come walking by, uh -huh. the beads are getting thrown down to them a, a little extra harder. Oh. I swear Do to God. I think people are on purpose Look, dude, throwing? I don't know. I mean, half the balcony is our crew, and then there's another half that I don't know who those people are, but I just saw some beads get rifled at some black you know, chicks. I don't care about uh, the color of their skin, but, you know, some of these girls, the black chicks that have walked up, we saw one look just like Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> and I don't want to be throwing beads and seeing the boobies of a girl that looks like Samuel L. Jackson. <laughs> Throw me the beads! All right, speaking of Tom from New Orleans, let's get Tom on the... On the air. My bra is the one that says bam. How you guys doing? Oh, Tom, there he is. What's going on, Tom? He can't hear Hello, baby. I didn't see some titties. <laughs> He's tanked. He's already tanked. Look at him. He won't give the mic away. He's I can't fighting hear. with Ben for the mic. Make, let Norton make him again. stand over there. No, stand back over there. Come on, Norton. No. You know you love me. I do love you. <laughs> Damn it. Ben's trying to keep him away. I smell him from here. He's awful. He is I so hammered. Dude, he's licking, he just licked his tongue and he just wiped your head. Oh, Norton, God you love damn me. it. No, that's going to drive Norton nuts. We'll have Kenny uh, away. That's going to drive Norton absolutely Tom nuts. Tom is absolutely. gone. He is gone. You know what the equivalent of having him lick your head is? Have somebody take you and rub your head in that liquidy gutter down there between oh, the ground man. and the sidewalk. That's the exactly what it's like. The walk from the hotel over here to the... Uh, the crazy horse Wait, balcony. Could, hold on, can we slow down a second though? Yeah. Because you just said something that was kind of funny. The walk from the hotel to over here. Yeah. That was the first time you left the hotel. I have not been out of the hotel <laughs> since our plane landed, and we went to the hotel and checked in. We I checked have not in left. what three, four days ago. I don't even know at this point. <laughs> it seems like that, yeah, but it's no, it's New Orleans time. Like a day is like three days. Back I believe home. it was Saturday afternoon we got in right uh i guess and now it's monday afternoon i just left the room yeah i'm gonna i want to start by you know the brainiacs that decided that we could just easily get to our hotel on a saturday night on bourbon street oh my god they had roads just blocked off at, uh, what a mile in every direction easily yeah, there's no vehicular traffic on these roads it's all pedestrians packed i mean from building to building across the street on the sidewalk in the streets you cannot even walk, never mind get a car through there. Yeah, so uh, we're in this limo, the whole crew, you know, and uh, all of a sudden there's the roadblock, and we're like, you got to be kidding. We're like 10 blocks away, and we got luggage and minimum, everything. Minimum of a half a mile, and yeah. they're like, sorry, you're going to have to unload here and bring your bags to the hotel. We're like, what? Club Soda Kenny jumps out of the limo, shows his badge, says a few things. Next thing I know, it's like the parting of the Red Sea. Kenny is walking next to the limo like a, like a secret service for the president. Yeah. And everyone, he's just going, get out of the way, watch your backs. 
And, uh, yeah, the crowd was parting. Our car got to drive through. Uh, right up uh, by the back door of the hotel, pretty much. Yeah, it was perfect. It was like that scene from uh, In the Line of Fire. Yeah. I felt uh, I felt very proud to have Kenny with us. So then what happened was we uh, we check into the hotel. I go, all right, Ant, see you later. Yeah. And this is the first time I'm seeing you. Like, two days later, I finally see Ant. So anyway, you left the hotel for the first time, and I'll walk over here. I don't leave the room uh, because I remember last time we were here. Right. And last time, uh, it was it was a clusterfuck. We all remember that. Didn't we make a pact? We were here, what, two, three years ago, and we said we would never return? We absolutely said we are never, ever coming back here again. And I, But but kind of looking back on it, I think it had a lot to do with the broadcast. It was so bad. It was. So, I mean, it's, it's memorable now as being one of our worst broadcasts ever. ever right. But people now look at it fondly as that. Yeah. Uh, so I think that put us off to it a little more, too. Um, the, the walk back to the hotel last time, we've yet to do that, by the way. I think you guys have, though. You've walked these streets at night. Um, we've been all over the place. We were in some crazy Irish bar last night for the Super Bowl. We'll get into all that. That had a lot to do with it, too, because it is disgusting. Right. Uh, your brother has a photo that he showed me that is the definitive Mardi Gras picture. I don't mean the beads, the girls with the tits, the balconies, the people. Not that. It was one picture he showed me. It was a close-up of a vomit splattered yeah. on the street. Yeah. With some beads in it. Know what the best part of that picture is? Uh, it's like Technicolor. You see yeah. how it was vibrant the colors were? The greens were yeah. piercing. And when we first got here on Saturday, my brother and I, the cool part is Bourbon Street is just a complete sea of people. It's like yeah. a river of people. You could deal with it for about 10 minutes before you just want to punch someone, unless you're up on your one mind. of these balconies, right? So, But the cool thing about uh, New Orleans and, and uh, Mardi Gras is to go down these side streets. That's where, you know, it's like manageable. Right. And that's where everyone pukes because they're, they're on Bourbon Street. They've had too much to drink, too many hurricanes. And yeah. all of a sudden, uh, they're like, all right, got to go somewhere and puke. So they go down the side roads. So the side roads are just littered with these Covered amazing with freaking... Uh, piles of puke, and we've been taking a ton of pictures. We're going to make a collage of it. Vomit hopscotch you play when you're going uh, down the side streets. Right. So, uh, yeah, you were talking about the walk over here. Yeah. The, the sidewalks, even though we got up early to go to breakfast this morning, and what happens is they get the, the crews out with their their powerful hoses, and they, they hose everything down. Yep. you got to see this freaking street at, like, I think we were up pretty early, 839 in the morning. I Dude, remember from last time we were here. Disgusting. It, it is putrid. And then after they hose it down, you know, they're not getting on their uh, knees and oh scrubbing my God. it with We're a about scrub to see brush. Some amazing boobs. Oh, there she is. Tom's working this one. Uh, this girl is beautiful. Go ahead. They Sorry, don't Anthony. scrub the street, so it just kind of collects in the gutters now. Right. And the smell coming out of these gutters when we were walking over, I swear I almost puked. Yeah. It, it, I, it hit me at one uh, intersection. It was vomit and, like, bad hot dogs and, and just bad like uh, bar beer yeah bar you know, beer that, that stale beer that morning smell. after bar smell and the and the sidewalks are all slimy it's like taking a whole bunch of lard and just like you know just you know oh, yeah, rubbing you it into skate. the sidewalk you, you could, could skate, skate uh, to the hotel and i think that's what kind of turned us off to it last time is because that's something like my last memory of it is that and then going back to the room and then we flew out the next uh, day right so i was kind of oh uh, no, wow that was wow. a nice one i was kind of leery about leaving the hotel la uh since we've been here yeah so uh, me and my chick just hung out you know you're kind of in a hotel and you're with your girl so it's kind of cool you know there there are things you find to do in the hotel in between getting room service and watching the super bowl That's so no, nothing wrong with that it wasn't uh you know it, it, it was nice but tonight we're going out we're, and I think we might even stay here at the Crazy Horse because we've seen chicks coming in and stuff. Uh, uh, the stage looks nice. It looks like a nice, comfy place. So I think we're going to hang out here and watch some uh, watch some chicks dance. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Jimmy, what's going on, buddy? Just watching all the girls flash. There's really nothing above a five here. Uh, so far, it's been, uh, well, this is like the daytime flashers, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, it's like the daytime strip clubs and stuff like that. But you know what I noticed, too? Jimmy's right. The girls and uh, uh, the guys that are with them, a lot of them in the daylight look like those couples you see on those HBO sex specials <laughs> yeah. where they go to those sex clinics yeah, right. to learn how to give a head and use a dildo <laughs> and have a, an orgasm. And they're the most heinous people you ever want to see. They're about 50 years old, right, right. flabby. That's the type of people you get uh, at this hour. I think later at night it does kind of get better because well, those people are probably still sleeping. We were talking to some of the locals, and they said that uh, Mardi Gras this, this, time, this year is a little weird. It's a little earlier than usual, so you don't get as... 
as many uh, you know college kids here. You know where you get. Oh, is nice, that what it is? You get the nice young meat. We're, there's a lot of middle-aged women just flashing like crazy. Look at this girl, completely topless with the body paint on. Oh, she's painted, got beads on, uh, and she's got piercings. Her boobs are, uh, are are painted in like a, like a daisy flower. Very we nice. saw we saw a couple uh, of women that were about 60 years old. They were wearing nothing but fishnet for shirts. Right. And it was heinous. Like they left looking at themselves, going, "Yeah." This is going to work today. <laughs> and people were giving them beads just so eventually it would cover their awful boobs. So I look good. Really horrid. So uh, there's, there's just so many stories to get to. I don't even know where to begin, man. We, we were watching the Super Bowl last night at an Irish pub. Norton was there. And Master Poe was there. Club Soda Kenny, the whole gang. And Master Poe was pretty much guarding Ben from getting the, the shit kicked out of him, basically. Ben, huge pass. Dude, you fan. have no idea. I know you're going to, like, you know, fight back here a little bit. Ben was so excited, as well as he should. You know, the Pats won their third Super Bowl in four years. Gotta I know. Give it to him. The dynasty, Opie. The dynasty. Don't forget to mention the dynasty. Everyone is talking about the dynasty. Oh. And uh, Ben, every play was just doing the herky jerk. Ben would, ju every time there was something good, Ben would leap off his chair and do this awful, like, jump up and down in a circle dance and then do, like, a quick jerk. And this guy's playing a video game that wanted to punch him in his large He's skull. bumping into people playing video games. Because the club, I heard, I, I wasn't there, was packed. Absolutely packed. I mean, And Ben was the one with the most room because he was, like, moshing with himself. Well, wait a second. I had to, I was the one with Opie's brother that went all day to get a table at a place. And then these guys were just going to blow us off. But we had to get a table because everywhere was sold out. It was nuts. Crazy and so, insane, by the way. Yeah, yeah. So we got the, one of the better tables in the place. But, but then was, we it, lost all the chairs. It was nuts. It, it was, crazy, insane. It's crazy, insane. It's nuts. Anyway, yeah, I mean, you had maybe three inches of room on either side of you the whole time during yeah. the Super Bowl um, last night. But Ben, man, he, he had at least three or four feet around him at all times because he would just jump up after every crazy play and do this whacked out dance. By the end of the Super Bowl, we had five or six people imitating Ben doing this the herky-jerky dance. It was hilarious. It's like Homer Simpson. It's going to be huge. They're going to start doing it in the end zone. Yeah, right. Do the herky-jerky. Do the herky-jerky. You know those, uh, you know the video game, golf game or whatever? The, yeah. It's a really heavy machine. Uh -huh. At one point, Master Poe and Club Soda Candy both lift this thing up off the ground and move it. Because these guys, these jarheads, were ready to just beat the crap out of Ben. Kill he, Ben. Because he, he kept bumping into him, and he had no idea he was bumping into people. Very excited Ben. What an obnoxious Ben he was. After they won, he's going, it's his He's crying. It was the first oh. emotion I've ever seen him show. <laughs> I was very excited. It's, I know you were. It's he was a weeping. I had to watch it. They were all, like, leaving. I had to watch the trophy ceremony of and all that. Of course you did. You know? Of course you did. I got to tell you, though, that Super Bowl, I mean, the game was exciting, but, I mean... We don't even need to talk about the Super Bowl commercials. They stunk. You know something? They were, it was a non-issue, the commercials. Every year, uh, everyone makes a big deal out of them. This year, because of uh, the controversy of last year with Janet Jackson booby uh, showing, and then everyone jumped on the bandwagon and saying that the commercials were risque, the, the farting horse and you know the, the semi-clad women uh, in, in the commercials. So now they pulled back on that, that also, and it made it the most just unmemorable uh, Super Bowl, as far as commercials go, oh, and halftime show ever. Yeah, they rated like the Burt Reynolds commercials the best commercial. Yeah, stunk. That made you know made fun of all the uh, past commercials, basically all the cliche things they use in the Super right. Bowl commercials. I don't know. Know what's going to happen next year? You're going to see all the crazy commercials come back, and I'll tell you why. Because people don't feel like they got their money's worth. I mean, how much was the 30 second spot? Uh, you know, the, the uh, same. Point, what was it? 2.4 million for yeah. 30. It was like something for like 30 4.8. 4.8, I think, for a minute spot. And no one wants to pay that kind of money for a commercial. No one's going to remember. Right. And they only remember the ones that are a little risque, a little uh, spontaneous looking, uh, something that something that's memorable, edgy. Uh, now, this year, nothing like that because everyone was so scared. So they backed out. A lot of people, a lot of the big companies didn't uh, spend a whole lot of money putting these commercials together and getting them on the air. So yep. you wound up with a very lackluster showing. Money talks, so you you watch. Next year, the, all the crazy commercials will definitely come back. And yeah. then you had Paul McCartney at halftime. Oh, what did you think of that? The most boring halftime show I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it was the safest thing you could you could get. It was Paul McCartney. Standing on the center of a stage with his uh, bass guitar, his band on the peripheral edges of this big uh, stage, and that was it. 
They had some uh, fans, I guess, around the stage, but none of them even dressed the remotely risque. Uh, playing his songs, which are, you know, safe old Beatles songs. How how out of hand can you get when you're playing old Beatles songs? Right, get right. Back. Yeah. Hey, Jude. It was not, yeah, what, 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 what no, danger are you going to get in there? No, it was pretty interesting. In the bar we were at, though, the whole crowd was singing along to Hey, Jude. And, yeah, it was. And, 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 and these, I mean, the average age in the bar we were at last night could have been higher than 25, 26 years old. And everyone was just singing along to Hey, Jude. No, you missed it. Cause we're in Louisiana. They were actually singing Hey, Jude. Don't come in here. <laughs> <laughs> they, uh. They put it together. I mean, Paul McCartney, he sounded great. I'll give him that. He sounded just like the record. You might as well have just played a Beatles album. Right. Because that's, uh, that's pretty much what it amounted to. It was boring. I mean, we're getting to the point. Just bring back the uh, the marching bands for halftime. <laughs> yeah. Hey, they're spelling out USA. This is fascinating. <laughs> it was, there was nothing to that. It was very safe, milk toast and pablum. Thank God the game was uh, very good. One of the better games in recent years. Well, game I mean, was great. The last three Super Bowls that the Pats were in, uh, uh, you know, they've they've given uh, three great uh, great games. So. The game wasn't a blowout. The Eagles, um, they looked good. They looked a little more disorganized. The Pats looked like they needed a, a little time to get themselves organized. I think they were really pumped up and had it uh, settled down a little bit. But the Eagles uh, did a good job and. You know, Terrell, you'd like to bash him, but it was funny. He came across uh, uh, pretty well. So somewhere around the uh, second quarter, I, I uh, asked my buddy Bull, who he, he's down here broadcasting. I worked with him in uh, Buffalo, Rochester. We've had him on the show over the years. Sure. And I go, Bull, is uh, is T.O. even playing tonight? <laughs> you know, I was like, I, I forgot that, you know, he was even playing. But With his screwed together ankle. Yeah. Every time he was making those moves, they show some slow motion clips of him really changing the direction that he's going in in a split second on his toes and you see they would they would show it and i, I was cringing like yeah. i just want to see screws and a spring <laughs> pop out <laughs> just watch his foot fall off this is the most distracting thing because we're trying to do a talk show and out of the corner of your eye all of a sudden you'll see another girl flash and yeah like, and you just keep talking enjoy the breast and then and, uh, move on and then i have to think what was anthony just talking about Cause yeah you know, some you don't care about, others you're like, oh, hey, look at that. It's funny, all the beer trucks are making their way in down yep. Bourbon Street because it's time to, you know, to reload in reload, all these bars. Reload, bar supply, trucks, everything. And I've noticed that the Budweiser trucks and the Coors Light trucks and the rest of them are so much more important than than the lives of these human beings. You they see get how top these, priority. You see how these things are backing up r pretty much right over people. They don't care. It's like they got a job to do, man. They got to get the, the, you know, all the, the bars reloaded. Yeah, I saw one person... Uh, waving off there's one of the trucks beeping i saw him waving off a linen truck like i guess for napkins and tablecloths they were waving him away so they could back the bud truck in place so you know what the priorities are here yeah. just ask tom he knows too i think drinking tom, i think tom's passed out somewhere drinking god damn we've been doing the tom line you know the whole time we've been down here wherever we are we're like you can drink right here in starbucks yeah, it doesn't matter because he, his big line last time we came here was, you, they let you drink right here in the airport. Right. And when we landed, I was amazed. You know, there's guys with big beer cups. They got that hand grenade cup that looks like a hand grenade, drinking the hand grenade out of it, uh, the hurricanes. And you walk around the airport just drinking. And everyone's hammered at the, the luggage carousel. You know, Tom gets on the bags because he thinks it's a ride. <laughs> and he starts going around because he's drunk off his ass constantly. So then every place we go, yeah. They let you drink right here in the Starbucks. Yeah, let me tell you. They let you drink right here in the emergency room. <laughs> I don't know about the dentist's office. They might let you drink there, but I couldn't tell you. <laughs> Dude, we got such an Opie and Anthony crowd out here. It's not even funny. We got Opie and Anthony T-shirts and signs. It's, it's, oh, yeah. It's getting nuts. We got a Pats fan down here that's just lambasting me. I was rooting for the Pats. I the dynasty. Right, I know. All the Eagle fans are mad at us because I, I was rooting for the Pats. Yeah. Like, How can you do that to us uh, Philly fans, bro? Uh, Come on, what's wrong with you? You know, if I'm going to bandwagon jump, it's going to be with the winning team. All right, Why the hell would I go for the Eagles? We're just getting started. Why don't we take a break? You all right, Ben? Yeah. Okay. Everything's great. We, when we come back, we got to talk to Martini Steve and Club Soda Kenny. Martini Steve's got the, uh, uh, I, it can only be described as the flaming pimp hat. I heard about Martini Steve on evening number one, and uh, perhaps our audience... Look at Ben, he's herky. Oh, Ben's herky ben, and jerking and herky laughing and his jerk, ass up. Don't herky and jerk too much, or this whole freaking uh, balcony is going to fall over. People throw... And 
and we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. We're broadcasting live from Bourbon Street in New Orleans at the Crazy Horse. The Crazy Horse rocks. This place is very, very cool. We're going to have to check out the festivities after the broadcast. Oh, hell yeah. Um, I don't know about going to a strip club with Tom, though, and getting a Hummer in some cheesy office while you're being videotaped. I really don't think I need that. You'd probably say, and not a surprise, I'm the one giving them. <laughs> <laughs> I love you guys. I don't even know where that strip club is he's talking about. He's like, He said it's off the beaten path. Oh, it's probably around the place that I heard, because, uh, uh, of course, I was in my room, uh, Opie, my, much of this trip. I just got out to Today. Yeah, it's, it's kind of nice that you're out getting fresh air finally. Yeah, kind of taking a look around, a uh, lovely area. But uh, I, I was watching some of the local news here in uh, New Orleans, and six murders, six murders in one day, Wow! by the way, one day. You don't even get that in all five boroughs of New York City nowadays. But uh, I was stunned. There's Tom now in the middle of Bourbon Street holding up a drink. It's a green drink. Um, is that the grenade or the uh, Tom. or a green hurricane? Isn't that a hand grenade? I don't think it was green until it actually hit his teeth and he backwashed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, some, Christ. Some messed up chemical reaction turned that green. <laughs> Someone's throwing beads at him. He's coming back up. Uh, the guy's yelling it's a grenade. Tom's looking at a grenade. Oh, it's a grenade? A hand yeah. grenade? I yeah. wanted a... Uh, I wanted a goddamn hurricane. Uh, that's, uh, leave it. You know something? I, it serves me right for sending Tom out for a drink yeah. for me. I got you something. Yeah, I know what you wanted, but I know what I want to give you. And that's a hand grenade. By the way, I want to give him a hand grenade, a real one in his mouth. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> we'll improve his teeth. <laughs> who, who are these freaks on the other side of the balcony, by the way? I don't know. I think they're Tom's friends. Those they're, are Tom's friends. Oh, obviously, they're just babbling idiots. Yeah. They're trying to have a conversation with us, and we're doing a radio While we're on the air, We're yeah. talking in the headphones. Like, dude, it's a, it's a hurricane. <laughs> All right, stupid. I don't care. It's a question. Yeah, we're broadcasting uh, to the entire nation, but we have to listen to you. Tom's filthy friends. Do you guys want to say hi to Billy Mac? And talk about the Super Bowl. He went down to Jacksonville. Billy Mack was at the Super Bowl. Yeah, sure. Let's throw him on and uh, see what happens. See uh, see how it was to actually be there. I heard it was kind of hell for anybody that went down there uh, live. I'm trying to get more uh, headphone volume because it's getting louder and louder up here. Tom is losing his mind. Oh, thank yeah. you. That's that's much better. Now I can hear myself. Thank you. All right, good. Thank you, Tom. There we go. All right, now we all have now we're all reaching back to the thing and turning our headphones back down a little bit. But all right, let's just turn. Yeah, that's cool. Okay, that's much better. Thank you, Jaime. Jaime's doing a great job for us in the other room there. Jaime all right. is the best. Let's yeah, say great. hi to let's say hi to Billy Mack. He was in Jacksonville for the Super Bowl, and uh, let's see what he saw. Billy. Hey, what's going on, guys? You sound like you're having a much better time than anybody could have ever had in Jacksonville. Let me tell Billy you something. Mack. I got to ask one question. Yeah. Has Ben stopped patting himself on the back? Well, oh. he, he does it accidentally when he jumps up to cheer for a play. <laughs> yeah, it must be the big schlong of his. Uh, he what? emailed me about, not email, text message, about 55 messages last night. And the last one was, we are the best. Yeah, he was yelling and screaming Dynasty all the way back to the hotel. This is what I noticed about Ben. As soon as the Super Bowl was over, everyone left him alone. No one wanted to deal with Ben. No. No one. We're like, hey, Ben, take care. Jimmy went one way, I went another, and... Next thing you know, Ben is all by himself celebrating uh, the Pats' victory. Who wants to sit there and listen to him just gloat? No, it's awful. Ugh. His hair is all matted to his head and sweating. <laughs> ah, that's it. All right, Billy, so how was Jacksonville? It just sounds like the worst place to have a Super Bowl ever. Let me tell you something. I'm going to try and keep it clean. It's like having three pounds of garbage in a one-pound one bag because no matter where you went, you, I, I'm not bad against crowds, but they just they had no idea what to do and how to do it. I hope the phone's not crapping out because I'm at the airport. But, uh, you know, whatever right you there. saw on television, it was just the PR people trying to tell you everybody had a good time. But Why were Puerto really Ricans saying that? Fans, it's impossible. <laughs> Nobody had a good time. Uh, yeah. Billy, how, how far away from the stadium was your hotel? Well, I got kind of lucky. We, uh, I was about 12 miles away. We got a, we got a joint at the uh, Jacksonville Airport, and then we scored a room at the Hilton, which was actually a river walk, uh, if you're familiar with the place. but uh, Not at all. Nah, it, it's, 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 you guys are down in New Orleans, it, it, it's probably as crowded down there as it was on one location uh, by Riverwalk. It's crazy. Right. And what, they had like the cruise ships, uh, you know, lined up for, and, and people were staying on the cruise ships because they didn't have enough hotel rooms and all that? 
Well, one, one of the major networks, I'm not going to mention their name, had one cruise ship in front of the Adams Mark, which was like the VNFL hotel, and you had to be whoever you were to be there. The rest of them were up a little west of the, of, of the stadium, all tell, but you really didn't see them. I don't even think you could see them on the TV shots. But, well, that's, uh, actually, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. That, you, you couldn't get If you were a regular Joe like myself, there's no way you were getting anywhere near that. Well, after the, after the people were done with the Super Bowl, did they go back to the cruise ships and watch Boss do 20 minutes on stage? <laughs> Jimmy, I couldn't hear you, but you probably just thought about that they whack off. I don't know. No, no, no. Nothing, now, B- Billy, Billy, I'd like to know, uh, who joined you at the Super Bowl? <laughs> well, I, I really didn't get a chance to meet up, but we had a good conversation, and uh, he's back home. It, 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 did you talk to him about coming on our show at all? Uh, you know what? I really didn't get a chance to do that, and uh, I'm going to do that because uh, I'm coming back down next week uh, for the Daytona 500, so we're going to be in communication with that. Was was he alone, or was there a, a female companion with him? Uh, I, you know what? Like I just said, I only spoke by phone, so I, I'm not quite <laughs> yeah. sure what you're talking about. You're good, Billy. You are good. <laughs> you're a not- <laughs> Your true friend of Jay's. Uh, not going to rat Jay Moore out. I'll give you guys a shout again. And listen, have a good time. By the way, you guys, uh, have you been to Rick's Cafe yet? No, what's that all about? Rick's Cabaret? Uh, I, you know what? If, if you can't afford Rick's, try Temptations, and I'll leave you with that. Goodbye, Sweet Cheeks. Oh, we broadcast it live from Temptations last time. That's a great club, too. Um, yeah. You can't say who all it was, right, Joey, by the way, you. that he was down there with. But afterwards, they went out and had a cough medicine daiquiri. <laughs> <laughs> uh, by the way, Martini Steve is filming us up here on the balcony at the Crazy Horse, and yeah. he's got his flaming pimp hat on, Anthony, that we bought this morning after breakfast. This looks like it was made for Steve. Like, this hat was put together just for Steve to wear. The flame pattern on it is exactly like the flame pattern on his shirt and his shoes. You know, of course you could pick up flame wear anywhere, but to match the flames exactly from his shirt and his shoes, uh, it was meant to be. And it's one of those wacky Mardi Gras hats. Yes. It's all black fur, and then it's got, like, silver Christmas tinsel in it. And then the top has flames, and underneath the brim has flames. And it is the gayest thing I've ever seen. Steve, you can't hear us, right? Did you see the sign in the store? It said if you buy two of these hats, you get a free load on the chin. <laughs> Atrocious. Yeah, he, he was very excited when he uh, found this hat. Why, wow, why is Steve freaking out? What are you doing? I'm not freaking out. I'm just trying to put my... He, oh, oh, he can't get the headphones around my hat. Right. Yeah, yeah, we can't get you headphones well, or the hat. Well, well, this is what sucks. Once again, we're doing this broadcast. We're literally a foot away from each other, but it's so yeah. loud. Jaime did a great job with the microphones and everything, but it's so loud. There's a bar across the way just cranking music yeah. louder than I've ever heard music in my life. So we can't even hear each other. We're a foot away. So, so Steve has no idea what we're saying. And there's a guy across the street who looked like Patrice O'Neill wearing a big purple hat that just says no cover. Yeah, he's trying, trying to, to people in. usher people in. It's very loud here. It's Bourbon Street, Mardi Gras. What do you expect? You know, we got to deal with it. Right. And but Steve can't hear us talking, so I, he needs headphones. I kind of feel guilty because uh, when we got in Saturday night, we all went out, did a little dinner. And then we went to uh, the House of Blues, and then we went to, like, a uh, kind of just a dive bar, you know. And I was ready to leave, and I think it was Club Soda Candy, and a bunch of us were heading back to the hotel. Steve looked at me. He had a few in him, right? Of course but he, he was trying to be responsible, and he looked at me, and he goes, I think I'm going to go back with you guys. And I... Uh, I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm a, an enabler, I think, because I go, Steve, nah, stay out, have some fun. Ah, oh, yeah. You're down in New Orleans. Like, he was at that point where he was trying to show control, and yeah. he was ready to leave. And all he needed was someone like me to go, yeah, all right, come on yeah, back come with on us. Yeah, come on back, But man. instead, I'm like, nah, Steve, you know, party. Why don't, you, why don't you stay and have fun? Put that little walnut stomach to use. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> so that's the last I heard of Steve until we all started getting the Ben phone calls in the middle of the night, 2, 2.30. I think Jaime has one on his phone. Yeah. Basically, Ben was calling everyone, laughing his ass off. This was like 2, 2.30 in the morning <laughs> to tell everybody that Steve passed out at a strip club and they don't yep. know how they're going to get him back to the hotel. Yeah, I, I, was, I completely fell asleep in an easy chair in a strip club with girls all over me kissing me, apparently. Uh, and I have no recollection. Apparently, I was tired and disinterested, and uh, yeah, that's belligerent. You forgot belligerent. I was. I wasn't belligerent. I heard belligerent. I wasn't belligerent. Is that what you call it? Tired when you're passed out with a drink in your hand? I wasn't belligerent. <laughs> I was a little tucked out. Oh, sleepy. I have. I have. I have no uh, recollection of being belligerent. 
kept, he kept saying, I'm not going to rape you. I'm not going to rape you. I'm not <laughs> that is rape not you. true. I heard that's true. You, I mean, that's just a rumor. That is not true. That's a rumor from another city. We're, we're talking about New Orleans Yeah, now. that didn't happen in New Orleans. But uh, I, I just felt bad because he really wanted to be responsible and come back to the hotel. And I was the one, I think, that pushed him over the edge. Like, nah, stay out. Stay Good out one. where all the drunks are and all the alcohol is, Steve. You'll be fine. Good one, Ope. And nobody, yeah. nobody loves Ben uh, Steve's misery more than Ben. Yeah. Like, you can't hold a discussion with Ben. We're watching the game, and I'm like, yeah, man, it's first and four. He's like, yeah, Tom Brady, dude, hey, I'm Bear Steve. I'm passed out. <laughs> <laughs> he just like, throws all these awful non-sequiturs out of the conversation. Well, well I, think, uh, I think what Ben was doing was uh, uh, sending the girls over to try to make out with Steve and stuff, even, right. though, even though he was, even know, though he was a little out. sleepy. Yeah, I, I was yeah. a little tired. But I, then, I, was, I was trying so hard to, make, to maintain some little modicum of control, and you, you know. Someone was telling me, too, that... They finally got you up out of the chair. You woke up for a little while. And we all have these wristbands on. It's the only way you can get in and out of the hotels. And Steve forgot where he was. I swear this is true. Someone said it. All Steve said was, bring me here. And points to his wristband. Oh, my God. Like, he had no wow. idea where the hotel was. And he didn't even know the name of the hotel. But he, he remembered somewhere in his drunken stupor that the name of the hotel was on his body. So all he said was, Bring me here. And he was pointing at his wristband. You, you like yep. tats. You have tattoos. You want to get your address tattooed on your wrist. I really so should. So you could just go bring me here whenever that happens again well, in the future. I've, I've gotten ripped drunk at Mardi Gras. You can check that one off the checklist. Now I don't have to do it again. I heard uh, that you passed out. You were asleep in, in that chair. Yeah. And uh, someone tried to give you a hot foot, but no one even noticed. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Put a little match in there, lit it, and nothing happened. He wasn't passed out. He was hibernating. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> in his lair. Oh, cozy bear. He was very comfortable. Wigs over him. Hey, I'm Steve. I'm passed out. <laughs> so, then, oh, thanks, man. so then Steve was very responsible last night. I was. As we were watching the Super Bowl. I was amazed that he wasn't drinking last night. But Not Opie, a drop. Opie, speaking of bear. Oh, speaking oh, of oh, bear. Oh, oh, yes, Anthony. Uh, you know, Valentine's Day is coming up. Yeah. And uh, what what better gift can you find than a Vermont teddy bear? I say none. I say none better gift than Vermont teddy bear. That's right. Oh, I hope you're not thinking about giving the uh, the same old boring flowers and chocolate for Valentine's Day. you got to be original this year. Send your wife or girlfriend something with personality. A Vermont teddy bear. That's right. they got bears that uh, can reflect uh, every personality. Wait, I just realized something. Yeah. You segged into a live commercial? Yeah, I did, Ovi. <laughs> You're like the Segmeister. I, I, Fantastic. I, yeah. I, I, I was hoping to be through it before anyone noticed. <laughs> what a rip those guys did on Vermont Teddy Bear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we love the guy at the Vermont Teddy Bear. Company. That's right. They've always supported the program, and they continue to. They got the uh, Lover Boy Bear. It's got heart-shaped love tattoo. The gangster love the heartthrob bear. Wears uh, boxer shorts and the mysterious love bandit. They even have a brand new officially licensed Playboy bear. Wow. With a smoking jacket and a martini glass. Isn't that cute? A bear with a martini glass. Where have you seen that before? A hobby or occupation? Uh, how about a racer bear? Or the love handle bear dressed like a trucker. That's right. Best of all, she'll think, uh, uh, she's going to think of you every time she hugs her little bear. Shop at VermontTeddyBear.com or call one of the friendly bear counselors, 1-800-829-BEAR. They're going to deliver it with a free chocolate and a gift card in their famous box for about the price of a dozen roses. A Vermont Teddy Bear keeps giving and giving. Vermont Teddy Bear, the only bears handmade in America, and they're guaranteed for life, Opie. Would you like to continue right about there? Uh, no. <laughs> send her bear at the office. Send her bear to the office, and when it arrives, she's going to be completely surprised, and all her coworkers are going to think you're the greatest guy in the world, even if you're not. It's a sure thing. I'll, uh, I'll wh- do this part. Oh, okay. The tag. Go ahead, Ope. Make this the best Valentine's Day ever with a gift she'll really love and always remember. Call 1-800-829-BEAR. That's 1-800-829-BEAR. Or shop online at VermontTeddyBear.com today. Overnight and Valentine's Day delivery guaranteed. That's 1-800-829-BEAR. And if you give them a call, make sure you tell them Opie and Anthony sent you. Okay? Yes. And now we're back with the program. Is this Yeah. Now? Wow, we're going to have to work on that. <laughs> this is the new thing we're doing is live reading. Live reads are back on the show. How about that? That's very cool. Here's a straw for your drink, Anthony. Oh, thank you. And it's it's wrapped like Howard Hughes likes it. Thank you. I saw that. It was wrapped in a napkin so other people touching it wouldn't upset me. I like uh, one more thing about the uh, live read. I can't wait to go on the message board and read. Uh, I paid for the channel too, so I hear commercials. Shut up, stupid. Shut up. 
shut up and stay tuned. You'll be pleasantly surprised. Yeah, you're going to be very uh, pleasantly surprised. So. And, by, I, and by the way, since the uh, live read is over, can you mention that they have the Ben Sparks Bear, which uh, twitches like it has Parkinson's and comes with an extra liver after a Super Bowl party. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, uh, can, can we bring Club Soda Kenny in here? Wow, the music's getting even louder across yeah, the way. People are screaming. Uh, we need a mic for Club Soda Kenny. Kenny's just looking at us like like a deer oh. trapped in headlights. Oh, he, he has no idea wow. what's going on because no one can hear us. Girls are flashing below us. Uh, we got Opie and Anthony freaking beer mugs that we're throwing down. We're to the throwing people. down and hurting some people. I like the people that actually we got these. Uh, yeah, they're they're beer cups. We throw them down to the people. And sometimes they, they roll into the gutter, into the sleaze water in the gutter, and people pick them up yeah. and wipe them off. Well, it's to talk about a little hepatitis cocktail next time you drink a, drink something out of that. I guess it's a very valuable item. There you go, fatty. Wow. Enjoy. And we're throwing down these great, uh, XM has like 5,000 of these Opie and Anthony cups. There's the Opie and Anthony, they have the little caricatures with the down yes. syndrome heads. <laughs> and then on the back it says XM satellite radio. So the ground is like littered with them because once somebody misses it, they won't pick it up. Some people do, some people don't. So yeah, they're, they're kind of littering the roadway. Don't you, you guys hear me popping on the mic every time I say please? Well, I, you got to be a professional and yeah. know how to say your P's without actually popping them. All right. I was doing the same thing. I'm not a professional uh, broadcaster either. Don't I hope I get it. some lussy down here. How's that? <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Club Soda Kenny. Oh, Kenny has, Hi. has made his way to this side of the balcony. Hey, Kenny. Um, I just want to ask for a raise because I have to deal with Tom from New Orleans. Oh, yeah. And I, I want a raise for this trip. I heard Back about off that. Back the mic. Let it... You don't have okay. to. Yeah, you don't have to swallow the mic there. Yeah, what is, is he really uh, causing you anguish? Um, he's getting to that point. Yeah, yeah, he is very annoying. Yeah, Can you yeah. just make sure he doesn't lick Norton's head. I'm, I'm gonna make sure he doesn't do anything out of line. All right, thank you. Keep him in line. I, I just, I just wanted to ask you one thing. Yeah. Did you send a girl to my room last night? No. Because there was a girl came to my room last night. She offered me super sex. Yeah. So I took the soup. <laughs> Thank you, Kenny. Thank you. <laughs> I do have wow. to. Did you enjoy uh, Did you enjoy breakfast this morning? Don't give the gag away, but did you enjoy it? What with the homo joint you took me to? I didn't take you there. No <laughs> homo a... joint. Now listen to this. The hotel recommended this. Kenny this... goes. You know, Kenny does everything for us on the road, right? So he goes to the uh, concierge. 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 Consigliere. And uh, and ask for a nice place to have breakfast, right? Tom, I need a nice place for breakfast. <laughs> Tom, you're the concierge. You talk to him. <laughs> Mike so, is the manager at his hotel. <laughs> so uh, this guy suggests this place called Petunias. Yeah. Petunias. We Sorry, should've... Tom. I can't take it at Petunias. You're out. We should have known that it, it was going to be a strange place because it was called Petunias. Petunias. Right? So we all go. We walk into the joint. It was me and Kenny, my brother, and uh, Steve. and Steve the Bear, who fit right in. He definitely fit right in. The first thing we see as we walk in, it's all men as the waiters, Ooh. dressed in drag with fluorescent wigs and fluorescent uh, like uh, eyelashes. That doesn't tell you something right there. Uh, they had all had fake boobies. They had. Catholic schoolgirl skirts on, Ooh. Yeah, with the thigh highs and the and the uh, f me type boots. And w why were you there long enough to even notice all this? Why weren't you turned around and out? Because we were hungry. Yeah, and I must say, the breakfast For man was man-ass. The breakfast was very nice. <laughs> very nice. <laughs> Why, as soon as we walked in, I'm like, here's 15 to 20 minutes of effing radio. Here's 15, 15 to 20 sick pics for whackbag.com and the, and the rest. True. They look like uh, female, like Oompa Loompas because yeah. of the fluorescent wigs and stuff. The food yeah. was excellent, but we're looking at these guys like, what is going on here? I was trying to pick out the hot one. <laughs> yeah, we're all going, so who do you think's the hot one here? <laughs> <laughs> What did you have, eggs, Ben's dick? <laughs> <laughs> so, so then we couldn't figure it out, and obviously we had the, the, these looks on our faces like, what are you guys doing, right? And then they finally explained that, I guess, once a year they have to dress up like chicks, because tomorrow's what, Fat Tuesday, right? Yep. 
so I guess they're closed tomorrow, so it's a big deal, and this is what they do every year. They're known for this. They have their, really? their wait staff, you know, dress in drag. So normally they're not in drag? No, no, no not so at all. So uh, it, it was a gay joint, though? No, or, it wasn't a gay no, joint. No, no, it turned out to be very nice, actually. Very hetero? Yeah, yeah the food was good. That. Our waiter was like three, 350 pounds dressed up like this, and he's trying to have a normal conversation with us, and I'm like, could you just get me a, a refill of coffee, please? Yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was just really, really yeah, awkward. Yeah, he wanted to make small talk. Yeah. So, sounds great. I'm, I'm sorry I missed it. <laughs> yeah. I said, cut the chit-chat, sailor. Hey, Steve, did you like the breakfast joint this morning? See, no one can hear us. So every yeah, time Steve we want to talk to someone, we got to, like, we got to hand the, the only thing uh, I heard the only thing Steve really didn't like about it was they bring the breakfast sausage in their asses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> did you like the breakfast joint today? I did. Well, I liked the food. The guys were a little creepy. The guys a little, little creepy? Oh, very creepy. Yeah, they were very, very strange. Yeah, yeah with their flame hats. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> well, actually, one of them looked almost feminine, except for the Adam's apple. There was, well, yes, wait, it, you found one guy a little no, attractive. No, no, I didn't find him attractive. Like, that one's a girl. I'm like, she's not a girl. Look oh at the Adam's God. apple, you idiot. She just yeah, said she's not a girl. Oh, she's yeah. You see how easy it is to fall into that trap? Yeah, well. Hey, before you know it, you've got your right. hand on the back of her yeah. Yeah. big shoulders. Uh, it was right. good, though. <laughs> so then I go back to my room, <laughs> and... Uh, I saw a disaster in my bed. And I, <laughs> a disaster. And I, and I, and I, I panicked because last night after the Super Bowl, we were out t pretty late. We ended up on one of these balconies, uh, the Southern Comfort balcony. Yeah. Look at this guy with the Opie and Anthony t-shirt. What's up, bro? And he's, he's, he's ringing an inappropriate, inappropriate bell, bell as he's walking down the street. And he has no idea what we're saying Yeah. because they're not pumping the show out to the street. So uh, I go back to my, uh, my room to crash for a little while, right? Yeah. And I noticed, like... Uh, what can only be described as uh, 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 yeah. shit stains. Ooh, yes. where? I got it on in my your, bed. In your bed? All over my, all over one of my pillows, and all over like uh, you know the the, the fitted sheets. Oh. Dude, not just a little, like a lot. And the only thing I could think of, think about, was like last time when I got home really late from the Southern Comfort balcony and all that. You know, they had those little mints. Right, the, so, the mint on your pillow. So, uh, you know, I'm getting ready to crash and watching some more of the Super Bowl uh, coverage on ESPN. You know, the chocolate. The five-hour post-game show that they did on ESPN or whatever. Right. And I'm, I'm like, oh, I, I'm craving chocolate, so I eat this chocolate thing, and I'm thinking I ate the whole thing. I must have not ate the whole thing, and somehow it got in my bed. Oh, well, maybe when you took a bite, a little piece cracked off. Ended up in the bed. But that's what I don't understand. A little piece is going to make them that much of a mess? Little chocolate can go a long way. Little goes a long way. I noticed once uh, I had a similar story. I'll be, I was eating one of, these, um, uh, one of these meal bars, and it was a chocolate chip one, and I'm eating it in bed. And I'm kind of sitting up in bed, and one chocolate chip, now it's pretty tiny, falls down, and it, it must have fallen and gone kind of between my legs, yeah. where you know my ass would be in my bed, and I didn't <laughs> yeah. notice it. So I go to sleep, and, and as I hunker down to sleep, I must have smeared it on the sheet. And I, I wake up in the morning, I, I get out of bed and look, and right where my ass was is this skid mark of chocolate <laughs> on my white sheet. Now, I knew what it was. I knew I didn't crap the bed. But uh, I wanted to make sure my girlfriend knew what it was, because how embarrassing would it be to, to leave? She goes to get out of bed, flips the sheets over, and sees a shit stain down the, <laughs> the sheets on the side her loved one sleep. So I, I had to, you know, I'm trying to be quiet because it's very early in the morning, but I had to wake her up. I had to wake her up and go, baby, that's not shit. <laughs> I just got to wake up and hear, hear my excuse for why there's a brown skin mark in you my bed. You should scraped your finger through it and tasted it and said, look, it's chocolate. <laughs> and then you realize you were wrong at one shift and feel like a silly goose. Uh, yeah, after I lick it, I pull the sheets down further and see the chocolate chip laying there, <laughs> mocking me. <laughs> I, was, I was convinced that this uh, was left behind from whoever was using the room before me. They wash the sheets every uh, yeah, time. Yeah, I know, but I'm like, how is how did all this get all over the place, right? So then I, of course, I have to scratch it with my, you know, finger, and I gotta do the smell test, because I'm in a major Why panic. Why did you wrap like, it in toilet paper and scratch? Because you know, crap, uh, it doesn't come off that finger. That I was, smell will be there for months. I think I was confident enough thinking that most likely it's going to be the chocolate, but I wasn't sure, so I was right. like, all right, I got to scratch to make sure, and it was. It was chocolate. Wow, so, look at that. So, hey, that was very nice. Bravo. Redhead with the black roots just showed uh, her big, big I didn't see pan. him. 
You missed, Jimmy. Oh, she uh, did very well because she's getting just slammed with beads. Oh, <laughs> literally. Who, who just hurt her that? in the head? I think that's that my you, brother. Ben? No, it's my brother, Brett. Your brother, Brett, is a pisser. He's, and he, uh, Wait, just to finish the story, so yeah. I, I leave the room, and uh, the uh, the cleaning lady was right outside my door, and I... I, I took the covers all the way off, so now you see, I'm not kidding it, like a foot, ch you know, one foot long, at least, like a foot chocolate stain, and then it was on the pillow, and I, I didn't want to, you know, let her off the hook, so I go, oh, there was an accident there, I just want to warn you. What? I didn't tell oh, her. Oh, you what, told her yeah, it was an accident? Yeah, I didn't tell her what it was. I like, this, I had an accident there. I thought she said it to you for a second, oh, no, it no, really no, would have no, been no, scary. No, no. So that was uh, that was kind of exciting this morning when I got back from the Petunias breakfast joint. Petunias. Well, now I go downstairs uh, this morning, and uh, I go out to the uh, Kenny uh, leads me to the atrium outside the hotel. Very lovely area outside. It's like the courtyard. Beautiful weather down here. Uh, it's not. It's it's overcast and it's supposed to rain, but the temperature. You know, when you you think of New York the way it's been uh, the past couple of weeks, to be in 70 degree temperature is fan. Friggin' fantastic! Right. I love it. So we're sitting outside, and uh, the only people at the table are your brother, Brett, and um, and Ben. So we're hanging out, and they're talking about their night last night. And one thing they bring up, they're kind of going back and forth about how Ben and your brother got stuck with the $200 bar bill last night. Right. And and I guess your brother Brett had a kick in 100 bucks, and Ben kicked in 100 bucks, and all of you guys were drinking. And all I had to say was, Opie. What the heck? You make your brother pay for oh, his no, goddamn no, 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 drinks? No, no, that's not true, you, though. You pull out the Amex, hold you on, pay the hold tab. On, hold on, that's not true. First of all, I wasn't drinking. But that doesn't matter. I'm not talking about how second much you of drank. All, second of all, I wasn't drinking. And first, I think Ben pretty much drank all that. You were, you were most of the bar tab. It doesn't matter is what I'm saying. If, you're, if your men are drinking, it is your responsibility to pull out that Amex yep. and write it off. It's a business trip. Dude, you, you, had, you had a, it, to let your brother pay a hundred bucks hold on. for a night of drinking is, is Dude, completely you, out of line. You have, you have, you have nerve. You don't even, you don't even hang with us. You're hanging in a hotel the whole time. The first night we, we were here, I, I picked up dinner for everybody. Got no thank yous from anyone, but whatever. And 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 then they're too busy calling the papers. <laughs> and then and then I looked at my brother last night and I asked him if he needed cash because I didn't know what was going on because I wasn't drinking last night. I had a couple. I, dude, I looked at you and asked you if you needed cash. Oh, my brother just threw me I, under I, a bus. I, I, I know it. Honestly, it's amazing because I, I looked at him. I looked at him. I go, wait, dude, wait, wait. do you need cash? I gave him the cash sign because I didn't know what I was going actually, on. I did actually. I got to be fair. Yeah. And, and believe me, I'm happy to see you getting booed under the bus. But you, he did actually say, do you need cash? It wasn't very loud, but he did actually go, do you need some cash? And I, I kind of like leaned down like, what? He goes, no, no, no. But I nothing, didn't hear it. nothing. He actually did ask. Thank you. You did ask. Because I was just, I had a couple beers with my buddy Bull, and I was hanging in the back with Norton. We had our own little thing going. We had no idea what was going on with these guys. Ben was drinking like a fish, first of all, and, and ordering tons of food Ew. for himself. I, I, I was just under the impression if, if your brother is there, if your brother is there, there's no way he should have to pull out 100 bucks to pay for a bar tab. That's all I'm saying, Opie. I heard them co complaining about it this morning. I'm like, Jesus Christ. I get, all right, here's what I'm going to say. Wait, wait, wait. Dinner wait. on Anthony tonight. Dinner on Anthony. I will absolutely if, take everyone out tonight. If you're even going to hang with us tonight. I'm hanging tonight. Howard Hughes. Tonight. Oh, you know what? Oh, we got Howard Hughes going to his room because he's worried well, about... I do have the, to test fly a plane, but I, I'll be there. He's worried about the puke and the and the scum on the on the sidewalk. So I don't even know if he's going to like leave his hotel tonight. But, but if we're lucky to have Anthony hanging with us tonight, Anthony will pick wait, up the These are the, the Hughes bill. brothers. Anthony Hughes doesn't want to get germs on his hands from going outside. And Greg Hughes doesn't want to get germs on his hands from pulling money out. <laughs> I will. I, I am. I am doing it right now. I am inviting everyone to dinner tonight. Pick out a restaurant. I will absolutely go and and put the bill. Yep. Boy, you're gonna actually hang with us tonight, Ann? Gee. Dang. I said I was gonna hang tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, he's trashing me, but we don't even. We haven't even seen him for two days. I've been hibernating like Steve. And and I flew my brother down here. Okay. Oh, that is true. That is How about true. that airplane CD? Well, that's what I'm gonna. I'm gonna say. And see, I'm gonna get thrown under the bus for this one too. Because and I did feel guilty. Last minute, I, I told my brother, "You want you want to come to New Orleans?" It was, he, he's always wanted to go to Mardi Gras, right? So we fly first class, which I've talked about on the air before. It's, oh, it's a little, we. it's a little awkward for me personally from where I come from, but you know, it's a nice little perk that we have now, right? Sure. So by the time it was uh, time to book my brother's flight, because it was a last minute thing, boss. 
There was no where. Jokes for donation sign. The guy is walking down the street. <laughs> that should be Voss's sign. <laughs> should be Voss. By the way, what's awkward about flying first class? I, it's just uh, we've talked about it on the air. It's just it's a weird thing with me. I don't feel like I. Des- it's just weird. I don't feel like I deserve it and all that from where I come. The from. only thing awkward about first class is that Ben and Steve actually try to make eye contact when they're walking back <laughs> to the coach. Yeah. It's like look straight down into your yeah. magazine. Keep going. I'm not used to the, the you know the uh, the first class treatment. That's all. I mean I'm gonna try to get used to it because it's very cool. But yeah. So by the time I booked my brother's flight to come down here, there was literally one seat left on the plane. It was the worst seat. I oh, had my God, the... that's right. He sat in the worst seat on the plane. Dude, that's Fred, the worst seat. Dude. Fred, Jeez. explain where you were sitting. I think I was sitting in the bathroom, to be very honest with you. It was in the bathroom. <laughs> he was sitting on the toilet. I'm the only seat that could not recline, but everyone in front of me was more than happy to recline right in my face. It's that seat that's right at the back of the plane where the wall is, so you can't recline. Yeah, he was uh, the seat right next to the bathroom on, on the both back bathrooms. wall. Both bathrooms. On the back, bathrooms. On the back wall where his seat couldn't uh, recline. The Gremlin had a better seat in the Nightmare at 30,000 Feet episode of The Twilight Zone. Wow. <laughs> And then explain to Anthony who you were sitting next to. I was sitting next to one of God's special friends that decided that. God's special friends? Oh, yeah. He he likes to drool, and he likes to share a drool with everyone else that likes to sit next to him. Oh, my God. You had a tarp next to have the worst seat on the plane. And his mother sat about a row away from us, and she decided to scream across me to yell at him as he's drooling on me. Well, you had to sit next to uh, amphetamines in the gene pool when she was pregnant, <laughs> one of those disasters? <laughs> Didn't she have to tie a shoe or something? She had to tie a shoe. She had to tie it over me. Her breasts were press, pressed against my face, which Ooh. wasn't too bad, although she was 77 years old. That's uh, even better. That's and they bought him drinks on the on the plane, too. He had Bloody Marys out the ass. So keep them calm. Got to keep them calm, right? So a little God's special creature was drunk, too, screaming at people. And every two seconds, you hear the bathroom <laughs> push, and, <laughs> and then poof, the smell, the <laughs> And I looked down a little out. Down a little aisle, and there's little Opie and Anthony and all those guys with the First nice class. little food. I didn't, I didn't even look back once. And the pillows. I had a little guilt going on. I'm like, my brother's back there somewhere rowing. I call them the rowers now. Yeah. They're called the rowers, and I uh, I couldn't look back to see where he was sitting. In the bilge. Good. Right. Honestly. You want, you want to talk about travel problems? I understand your seat wasn't good. But, dude, on the way in, there were no Oyster Red crackers for my hot cream of asparagus soup. Oh, my <laughs> God. That soup was really good. No oyster egg crackers. I understand the last seat on the plane is uncomfortable, yeah. but try eating hot soup without oyster egg crackers. <laughs> I don't know why they get so, like, mad at, at some of those seats, too, because I made sure I looked back, and I, I had my, my wine glass full of uh, wine sure. for my meal, and I kind of, like, lifted it up to them in the back and said, hey, guys, how you doing? So I even acknowledged them, and they still were like, hey, we got bad seats. I don't like the fact that there's a curtain between first class and coach. It used to be a dark curtain, but since 9-11, for security reasons, they now have like a kind of a transparent, opaque right, yeah, blue yeah, curtain. Uh-huh. I don't like it, though, because I almost don't want them to look up right. and see what it's like up there. The pleasure like... in there. You know, that's nice of you that you wouldn't want them to see that. Don't rub it in. Yeah. <laughs> All right, why don't we take a break? We're running a little late I have here. a major complaint when we get back. A major complaint. Major Uh-oh. complaint from Jim Norton when we come back. Uh, oh. You want to do that? All right, we're going to do Ant's Martini Steve song. It's a break. It's Opie and Anthony broadcasting live from... Bourbon Street at, uh, what is this place called? Crazy Horse, right? Crazy Horse. Very cool place. Hot so, chicks. Oh, my God. The chicks are, are showing up for work. They're just phenomenal. Just walking around in their little, little outfits, getting ready for the night's uh, festivities. Yeah, my my chick had a fun little story when she went into the bathroom. <laughs> go ahead, real fast. She walks into the bathroom, and the dancers are all getting ready uh, to go on. So uh, she's my, my girlfriend's by the sink uh, putting her makeup on. And this uh, dancer comes running in, her underwear to her knees, with a tampon in her hand, like as she's running, trying to um, apply it, put it in. And then she sees my girlfriend just goes, oh! <laughs> oh, she was having, like, she kind of felt it coming on real quick? <laughs> yeah, I guess she had to run, like, oh! Is that and what? Our, our, our panties were by her, our knees as she's running with a tampon. It's like someone just blew a cannonball through the dam and you know it's about to burst. You're going to plug it real quick. Plug it up. I hate to be a chick. <laughs> oh, but to have to look at that. Ooh. And then, uh, you know, we'll go down later and, and watch the girls dance, and I'm sure she'll point out which girl it was, and we'll all laugh. That'll be the one. for the string. We'll laugh and laugh and we'll laugh, laugh and laugh. When do they start dancing here? That's crazy I don't know. Hours. When do they start dancing? Pretty soon. We should get some... 
<laughs> God damn, that was close. I think we picked them up. I'm not it. sure, but I think we're back on, are we? All right, Jaime's giving us a thumbs Wrong up. people. It's Opie and Anthony broadcasting live from Bourbon Street in New Orleans. We're at uh, Crazy Horse, the oh, Crazy Jesus. Horse. Oh, my oh. God, that's a mess that's right a there. Big black guy dressed like a gladiator. I got to tell you, we're on this balcony at the Crazy Horse's uh, balcony over there. We're just, uh, I think we're about a half hour away from having a major bead war with that balcony. Full-blown bead it's, war. It's We're starting to flirt with each other a little bit. Like, the girls over there are showing their boobs. We're throwing some beads nice yep. right now, and they're throwing beads nice back. I guarantee you, half hour from now, it's going to be an all-out war with that balcony. You watch, okay? I've been firing, like, fistfuls of beads down at people on the street trying to knock drinks out of their hands. This is what I noticed last night from the Southern Comfort um, balcony. Yeah. We were up there relatively early after the Super Bowl where it wasn't too crazy yet. Oh. And and people just take their time with their beads. They they point out a girl down below and it's all nice and they yeah. and they kinda gently toss it after she shows her boobs and everyone's happy and they're applauding, right? Right. You fast forward about an hour, hour and a half, and it's just an all out pegging that's going on. I wanna people, nail this woman. People Oh nice! <laughs> You hit her? Oh, yeah, yeah, right in the arm. Pull the fat pig hanging out the car. Yeah, yeah. Good. You almost, I nailed it like Kennedy. <laughs> you almost took out the side window. But what I was saying, and then uh, as the night goes on, you know, it's just an all-out pegging that goes on. Yep. People are just trying to, you know, hurt pretty, people. Pretty much hurt each other, yep. you know? Wonderful. Oh, Jim Norton has a complaint. Yeah. It, what are you upset about, Jimmy? I don't know. It, it's just really annoying. When I checked in uh, yesterday... The, uh, I go upstairs to my room, and in the in the upper floor of my two-level suite, there was only one soap in the bathroom. I go to take a shower. I, like I'm downstairs in the living room area. I walk up the spiral staircase to the top floor of my right. two-level suite, and I actually have to get out of the shower and go back to the sink to get my soap, and I was disgusted with that type of planning. So you... You have a two-level suite. Yeah, yeah, don't you? I, you know, I'm not going to lie. It hurt. It hurt a little bit. A little Cause, bit. Because um, Norton gets in, and uh, we all had lunch or something, and Norton goes, I'm going to check in because his room wasn't ready. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go and... Uh, I'm going to go and regroup in my room. Give me a call when you guys want to, you know, meet up with Ben and my brother and stuff for the Super Bowl. Yeah. So all of a sudden, Club Soda Candy calls about 20 minutes later. Anthony, the echo, the <laughs> echo that I heard coming from Jim Norton's suite. I'm not even lying. Kenny's like, I think we found a place to watch the Super Bowl. Because that was the big thing yesterday. We didn't know where to watch the Super Bowl. I go, where, Kenny? He goes, from Norton's two-level suite. Two-level suite. With a huge, you know, big screen TV, like two or three couches. Dude, the, his suite is absolutely oh, ridiculous. Brother. And I hear this echo, and I am getting, I'm not going to lie to you, it hurt. It hurt a lot, actually. And the worst is when he goes, come up and look at it, and I'm, I'm, I'm making the X across the throat sign. Like, no. Because no. I think Opie's going to kick me out of my suite because he's got his brother. They're sharing, like, a bed, and his poor brother's got to sleep on a cot. Well, all kidding aside, because we're having fun down here. It's Mardi Gras and all. Yeah. But Eric Logan and, and Kevin Straley are going to get the nastiest email from me starting tomorrow. Uh-oh. And here's the deal. We are, we've are we been trying to play nice and, and trying to, you know, go with what XM has been telling us. But now I insist that Club Soda Kenny takes care of absolutely everything. 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 Because I have a whole list of things that have gone wrong on this trip like all the other trips. And one of them, one of them <laughs> is completely unacceptable as we... We we just we just took out this, this just car. nailed that woman. They're in an SUV and their windows are open and we just completely destroy them. And she's all happy like waving at us. Yeah. Anyway, um, it's unacceptable. Kenny has to completely take over from now on. Yeah. And I won't accept anything anything different. He's and the what, guy that knows what we need. And what XM has to do, whatever differences or problems they have with Club Sona Kenny, it's time to get the fuck over it because Ooh. I'll tell you what happened. I, I checked into my room, right? I, I, everyone knew I was bringing my brother down here. Yeah. There's one king size bed, one king size bed, uh -huh. and the room is so small, which is fine. I don't really care. I'm not a, you know, I'm not a diva. Trust me. But we had to bring up a cot for my brother to sleep. A cot. And there's no, there's nowhere to, you know, to place the cot. Uh, nowhere. 
and everyone knew ahead of time, but this is because details aren't being taken care of like they should be. Kenny will take like, care of every detail. Kenny was on the road with Dice for 13 years. He knows this, and it's really starting to get really frustrating that XM just doesn't get it. I got you. You know? So, I hear you. And then we call down. There's no other rooms available. It's effing Mardi Gras. No. So we got the king-size bed and a cot. We, I can't even move around my room at all. I can't. Oh, brother. And then, you know, then to get the phone call from uh, Norton's two-level suite that could, that, could, <laughs> that could sleep like, I don't know, ten people comfortably, it hurt a little. I felt so guilty that I just kind of walked around downstairs in the living room area in my suite going, let me sit in the couch for 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, I'm done with this area. Let me walk up the stairs. Go space. upstairs. It's nice and dark in there. I love it. But I'm telling you, one bar of soap in a suite of that size the nerve. is just not acceptable. The nerve. That has to be fixed. So anyway... We're in the nicest hotel in New Orleans, though. There really is no better hotel than the one we're in. It is really nice. It's gorgeous, but, you know. But, yeah, it would have been nice to have maybe twin beds in there. And they're sick of us complaining about this stuff, but we we keep telling them we know the solution. Just uh, let us. Kenny's the guy. Oh, wait, what it. do we got here? Wow, look at this girl. Wow. I can't see. Hold on, Tom, I can't see. Tom is like, Tom, Tom, Jesus. Tom just grabbed the girl. Can I grab the this- yeah, go ahead. You can say whatever you want. It's satellite radio. He, uh, he just tried to stick two fingers in there. You I saw know. that, right? He cannot grope the strippers. That's illegal. No. Uh-huh. I, don't, I don't blame him for wanting to grope you, but that, I mean, that that best just tried to make two fingers disappear. Oh. Look at it, and then he just dances away all innocent, like, yeah. what did I do? What's your name? My name's oh. Jolie. Jolie? I'm the exotic schoolgirl at the crazy Yes, you world. are. Look, she's got a little schoolgirl type shirt it's on. It's recess. It's time to play. Yeah, when do you guys start dancing? We're trying to figure We're it out. We're dancing. I just got off stage. Oh, really? really? I'm all hot and sweaty. You are wow. lovely. You gotta love that accent down here. No, uh, she's uh-huh. a lovely girl. Very nice. Tom, what, you, what were you trying to do? Uh-huh. What were you trying to do? Nothing. This is my girlfriend. Uh-huh. You, you were Girlfriend, like, she's you horrified. Don't make me back you. Huh? You don't make me back. Yeah, we got the other mic on, Jaime. <laughs> she's horrified of Tom. Horrified. We just hooked up, right? Yeah, just hooked up. It she doesn't make me vacuum. Ah, is that it? You she's to ripping two, hot. You try to make two fingers disappear, though. It's illegal to touch the strippers in that fashion. <laughs> Look, look, he's that is a pretty pussy, guys. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh, don't, do don't, don't do a pancreas exam on her. Jesus. <laughs> and I got to tell XM, these cups are genius. These really are fantastic, yeah, man. Nobody's catching them. them. Regular, regular. Every time y'all throw the cups, nobody can catch them. Well, if somebody misses a cup and it rolls into the gunky water, they just kind of leave it. because Excuse can't... me, ma'am. It's time for your pap smear. <laughs> <laughs> Let me use my dirty alcohol lace fingers. <laughs> I'll tell you oh. if you have cancer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go, Tom. Hey, we got someone on the line that was on the plane with Jim Norton to New Orleans. Is that true? Let's really? See, let's see if uh, Todd is still there. Todd, what's going on, buddy? Hello. Todd? Hey, Todd. Yeah, hey, Todd. Todd. on the plane with uh, Jim Norton? Yeah, I was on the same plane as Jim, and uh, I was sitting back in close coach. Of course, he was sitting up in first class, and I kept on looking down the aisle, and the flight attendant looked just like Noah. And uh, he came up to me, spoke of a lisp, and he said, uh, can I help you, sir? And I said, well, I think I might know the guy sitting up there in first class. And he had the nerve to tell me, he said, hey, if you want to see Jim Norton, you can see him meet in town, New Jersey, at the Stress Factory, February 11th and 12th. <laughs> For more information, you can call 888-541-HAHA or log on to Jim's website at www.eatable.com. <laughs> Who saw that coming? Oh, my God, that was the best plug ever. The flight attendant said all that. That guy is great. He had me. I was in the plane with him. Like, I felt like I was there. Jesus. And then all of a sudden, I'm blindsided by a cheap plug. Oh, uh, Stress Factory this weekend in Eaton Town, the new Stress Factory. Thank that you, sir, for that plug. wonderful. That was fantastic. What a great plug that guy gave. <laughs> Sneaky bastard. Do you have to get back on stage? Eventually. Eventually? Look how low her little skirt is. It's, that is so cool. You oh. could almost see. Like, Can I see your hiney? It's so close to, uh, to ground zero there. Wow. Oh, very no, nice. Very Saturday nice. night. Somebody shot me in the ass with a BB gun, so I was having people check and see if I had a bruise. Are you kidding? Why would someone shoot you in the ass with a well, BB gun? they didn't mean to. They shot Give the ground like and it ricocheted, and I was just like, well, holy fuck. 
I was drunk. I didn't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> it's terrific. Oh, oh boy. Oh, it's amazing. What's oh, wow. yeah. You like that, don't you, boy? Of course we like it, Tom. I, uh, boy, one thing you said about me, which is whole true till today. You were drunk. I never disappoint. <laughs> Do I disappoint? <laughs> Come on, boy. No, Do absolutely not. No. Absolutely I not. I never disappoint. Jimmy. Yes, Tom. Wait a little tonight, boy. Uh, I'm waiting for it. Wow. That's great. I got you covered, brother. Thank All right, you, my Tom. famous his head liquor. Why don't we take his the... His teeth yeah, are like the you. Oreo tester. <laughs> 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 Did you notice his teeth? Oh. How awful they are? Can, Can you say, say it? it? She's making these uh, horrendous faces. <laughs> oh. we, we talk hey. about his teeth right to his face. <laughs> I'm missing my teeth. When you look at his teeth, do you think of Eli Wallach running while the ecstasy of the gold plays? <laughs> <laughs> out of his teeth? Hey, you want to see my tongue strike? Watch. Wait. Oh, look oh, at that. Fold oh, her nice. tongue. It looks like a three-leaf clover. Wow. We like that. That's great. That's great. You know, She's I, just so talented, Anthony. I'd like I to, you her. know, I don't know if this is too risque or something. I'll try to clean it up for the air. But uh, that would probably feel great on a cock. <laughs> Oh, maybe I should have put it in a different way. Fantastic. You have. Really? Ooh. Uh-huh. That's oh, a I surprise. Uh-huh. That, that statement's as surprising as Tom doesn't go to the dentist. <laughs> <laughs> if he did go to the dentist, he'd attack his teeth with a hose like civil rights footage in 1965 <laughs> from the other room. <laughs> they use the same hoses they're using to clean the sidewalk. <laughs> yeah, Tom's teeth. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thanks for stopping by. She's got to get back on stage. She's beautiful. We'll check you out later. Yes, Definitely. she is hot, man. I didn't want to ask. You think she's the one that had the... Uh... Uh, yeah, I was informed she is the one. That... That's the one that ha- is having her time of the month? She's on her period. Oh, wow. Good. Oh, wow. She's. I think... Wow. I thought she was really tall, <laughs> but... Her, no. Her spite... Her... Wow. Her, her stripper shoes are about a foot high. That's why when Tom pulled his hands away, it looked like he had uh, reached his hand into a cherry jubilee. <laughs> Well, I didn't know what it was. I'm like, hey, Tom, pass me the pistachios. <laughs> Tom is just the worst. He just doesn't care. Tom doesn't care. He walked right up to that girl and just grabbed her crotch. Yeah. yeah. He's you gotta respect that. Yeah. He's got some redeeming value, doesn't he? They let your fingers cringe. It's right here in the air, Paul. <laughs> I think we got to say hi to Tommy Harris from Engine 23, 58th Street and 7th Avenue there in New Orleans. Enjoy Mardi Gras. They wanted a shout-out, Anthony. That's nice. Uh, and some kid brought by a, a, a framed Cobain picture for me. Yeah, that's a nice photo cool. I saw. Nice. Very nice. How I, got, I, I got to do a quick hello, too, before I forget. When I got off the plane yesterday, I was met by three sheriffs, which was really frightening because I walk off and I see three cops standing there. And the one goes, uh, Jim Norton? And I'm like, uh, yeah. You know, I'm thinking, oh, Christ, you're going to look at the pictures on the laptop, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, I didn't know she was three. My favorite <laughs> shirt ever. So I walk up to the, I got to say hello to the guys. They walk me down. Uh, I, I don't have the car with me. I know there was uh, Lieutenant Brian, and there was uh, uh, Captain Chad, and then there are uh, Patrolman Dan. So how thank you guys. How did they know that you were getting off the plane? Because Club Soda Kenny said on the air that I'll only fly Continental. Wow. And, and they, they knew they, and figured they would meet you there. Just to say hello and get a picture. They were all in uniform? Uh, yeah, all three of them were. That must have been really scary. Dude, I, I felt like either a criminal or a movie star walking down with three cops as bodyguards. It was great. You got hashish taped to your body, yeah. run to the bathroom, <laughs> <laughs> end up in a Turkish prison for some reason. <laughs> Anthony, Valentine's Day right around the corner. It certainly is. And I hope you're, uh, you're not thinking about giving your old... Uh, your uh, girlfriend, that same old boring flowers and chocolate, are you? You gotta be original. Send your wife or girlfriend something with the personality. A Vermont teddy bear. That's right, they got a bear for every occasion to reflect every personality. They got that lover boy bear. He's got a heart shaped tattoo. They got the gangster love heartthrob bear. It wears boxer shorts with a mysterious love banded bear. They even have the new, brand new, officially licensed Playboy bear. He's got a smoking jacket and a martini glass. <laughs> Best of all, She'll think of you every time she hugs that little bear. Shop at VermontTeddyBear.com or call one of their friendly bear counselors, 1-800-829-BEAR. They'll deliver it with a free chocolate and a gift card in their famous box. Yeah, and for about uh, the price of a dozen roses, the Vermont Teddy Bear keeps giving and giving. Vermont Teddy Bears are the only bears handmade in America and guaranteed for life. Here's something that a lot of guys do, too. They get the Vermont Teddy Bear, and they send it to their chick at work, so then the people they, that she works with are all like, oh, look at He's that. so sweet. He's so sweet and nice. It, it definitely is a, is a sure thing, guys. 
Uh, I'm sending my val. No, I'm not sending any Valentine. Uh, to You're not to anybody this year. No, no. I'd no. like one. I'll make this the best Valentine's Day ever with a gift she'll really love and always remember. Call 1-800-829-B E A R. That's 1-800-829-B E A R. Or shop online at VermontTeddyBear.com today. Overnight and Valentine's Day delivery guaranteed. That's 1-800-829-B E A R. And if you do call that number, tell them Opie and Anthony sent you. Okay. Yes. All right. I think we're going to take a quick break. We're broadcasting live from Bourbon Street as the rain clouds come come rolling in. Oh, like yeah. Crazy it's getting a little horse. darker. Uh, I mean, the sky. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back with the Opie and Anthony program. It's yeah, getting yeah. ugly, just like we thought it would. Damn, that was close. We're broadcasting live from Bourbon Street in New Orleans at uh, the Crazy Horse. <laughs> the, beads, the beads are starting to fly a little harder. Stop. I came two oh, inches. Shit. What happened, Jimmy? What happened, Jimmy? If you want to throw, like, beads at people, fine, but you can't whiz cups at people. Tom, Tom is whizzing cups at people. How many balconies have Opie and Anthony cups? <laughs> Holy shit. Wait, give me my license. I want to throw it at somebody. To, oh. he, he doesn't disappoint, I'll tell you. I had a big handful of green beads, and I came within two inches of knocking some girl's drink right out of her hand. She was pissed. It is. It's, it turns into a bead war. That's yeah. good to wheel a baby around in the middle of Mardi Gras. That's healthy. Yeah, isn't that great? Yeah. And look at this lady. She's going to step right over. Uh, wow, that was good. The cup went right in the bag that that lady was holding up. So, all right. Tell them not to whiz cups of people. Thank you. Uh, what, why are you handing me this? They would like us to mention that. Who are they? That's okay. the sister club of the Crazy Horse. Okay. They're doing an event Ooh. at the Gold Club here in New Orleans. Getting naked is not an option. It's the G-String Awards, Anthony. Annual four-day competition begins Wednesday after Mardi Gras at uh, the Gold Club Cabaret. Very nice. We went there the ah. other night. That's the place Steve fell asleep. Oh, okay. Yeah. We, we had the chicks making out with Steve, and he had no idea. Exactly. You guys want to start a bead war with that balcony or what? Uh, they got some heavy-duty artillery. Do they? Yeah. yeah. We, we were running low on the big bees. We got these little ones. Yeah. Well, why don't we try to talk about the, um, the CBS Sunday morning thing? You didn't see it, right? No, for some reason I was up in time, but I, I missed it. It was uh, with Charles Osgood yesterday. Um, they did a, I think it was like a 10-minute piece on indecency. Jaime told me, he goes, I hope they're not going to turn the music up louder as, uh, as the broadcast continues. I'm like, are you insane? It's only going to get crazier and crazier oh, yeah. here. It's already louder. The people, there's more people in the streets. The music's getting louder. So it's all right. It's Mardi Gras. It's Mardi Gras. Yeah. It's all about. But, man, they're just pumping the music across the way. Uh, so they did like a 10-minute piece on indecency, and they talked to you and I. You hear how loud that's getting? Oh, I know. I don't know if they can hear that at home, but... Wow. That is loud. That is really loud. <laughs> They're going to drown us out of here. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, oh, my God. I've never heard music louder in my life. Wow. All right, just turn your headphones down a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> that's all I do. All right, I'll try that. I'm sure they can't hear that over the airwaves. Nah. I don't know. It depends on the microphones no, we're I'm kidding. But it might, it might not sound as loud. It sounds fine on the air, right? Yeah, it sounds fine. Anyway, so uh, CBS Sunday morning, they did a 10-minute piece on indecency because it's the year anniversary of John Jackson. And uh, they ended up talking to you and I. Yeah, they e did about two weeks ago, I guess, came into the studio. It was good exposure for us, but there's nothing really earth-shattering there, really. Nothing I, new? I think how, did they, how did they use our, uh, our stuff? They made us sound very intelligent. We had intelligent things to say. Wow, that's a trick. Of course, they had to mention that we got kicked off the air for having a couple of sex at St. Pat's Cathedral. And then they showed, like, an a inside shot of St. Pat's Cathedral. Ooh. And it, it was almost like a dramatic pause, you know. Really? And then they talked to you and I in our, our new XM studio in New York. Did we say anything entertaining or funny? Not really. Or they just kind of kept it to the facts? It was kind of boring. But the funny thing about it, they, they showed some, uh, you know, B-roll of the studio and stuff. And Rich Boss was sitting in for Jim Norton all that day. Norton yeah. was bummed that he wasn't going to be there. Voss was sitting in bragging and saying, ah, ah, I'm going to be on national TV in place of Jim Norton. They didn't show Jim Nor uh, They didn't show Voss at all. Not even like a piece of him? They showed Nothing. Patrice for like a half a second. Patrice he, got some uh, air time? Yeah, that, that was the day he came in with all the glass dildos. So. Um, but I think the clip is up on foundrymusic.com and opianthony.com if you missed it from this past weekend. That's all I'm going to have to see. Right? 
Do you want to play the audio of our part and try to listen to this? Yeah, that way I'd be able to hear a little bit. All right, we got Eric back at the at the studio. Let's see if uh, this is going to work. Eric, whenever you want, play our part of the CBS Sunday Morning thing. Satellite is where you'll find radio personalities Opie and Anthony, who were a little on guard when we visited their studio. And uh, what usually happens is we'll say something really bad and outrageous. They'll have the sound up on that, and then they'll turn it down and do the voiceover of, you know, how horrible they are. Yeah. <laughs> Opie and Anthony were fired from a Boston radio station in 1997 for an April Fool's joke. We figured we'd just blow the whole thing up and, and say... Uh, that Mayor Menino was, was dead. It's really great to be here. To he wasn't. And in 2002, they were fired from a New York radio station after taking a phone call describing a couple having sex in New York's St. Patrick's Cathedral. You know, morally, it was obviously wrong. I mean, it, I guess it was a mistake on a level, but... As far as what we do, it's kind of made us bigger. What do you think about the Super Bowl? Opie and Anthony now broadcast nationwide on XM radio without any fear of the FCC. It gives you a lot more freedom. It's getting on the air and being able to discuss anything without worrying that it's going to come back and bite you from the FCC. It's basically talking about adult subjects like adults talk about it when uh, they're maybe at their friend's house, maybe in the locker room. They sell this stuff on the street? We know there's an audience for it. That's why we're doing it. That's why we get paid a lot of money to do it. With moves afoot to pump up the fines on traditional broadcast TV and radio, the route of Opie and Anthony may turn out to be a road more traveled. Because make no mistake, there's a cultural battle underway in America that could be every bit as bruising as what you'll see in the Super Bowl later today. At least during the game. Halftime? Given what happened last year, it's a safe bet. You can let your children back in the room for that. And that, and that was pretty much it. That's it, huh? It was pretty much uneventful, but... That's all we got? Yeah. But they made it sound like that halftime show last year was so outrageous, and I, I still argue that it really wasn't that bad, and people got to relax. And we saw the results of it this year. We were talking about it earlier, that it was a really boring halftime show. I mean, seeing Paul McCartney sing some Beatles songs was, was cool, definitely. But the, the, the commercials were just like, who cares? You know what? That would be cool to see uh, Paul McCartney doing that, like on Saturday Night Live or something. Their musical guest. You know, as far as the Super Bowl goes, you, you want it to be high energy or something. It, it was... Uh, there's nothing. Wow, this really got loud. I know. All of a sudden, my mic and everything got really loud. Look, it's just it's just getting harder and harder to broadcast. There are so many people below us yeah. here, uh, below the balcony. But uh, you can see the whole piece on foundrymusic.com or opianthony.com. It was a cool little little thing for the show and good exposure for us. And, uh, I was I was trying to pay attention to the clip, but there was a what had to be 14 year old girl walking by in front of us. Did you see her? No, I missed she was, her. She was stunning. <laughs> oh, my God. I know. What's well, wrong with you? No, and Norton, I think, threw her beads or something. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll lie and hang me out to dry now. Like no one saw the hot 14-year-old girl. <laughs> I did not even know. Uh, can you hear me now? I, I couldn't even notice her. No, you didn't see her at all? <laughs> no, no, not at all, but I'm glad I threw her beads. I should have made her earn them. <laughs> <laughs> um, Anthony, I was thinking in honor of the CBS Sunday morning piece. Yes. We've had a lot of requests for that uh, Charles Carroll thing. Oh, I remember that one. We uh, played it for the first time, I think, last week. Actually, when they came in to film that piece. Yeah, we had played that. And I think this would be a good place to play that as we try to regroup and, and try to figure out how we're going to do the rest of this broadcast because it is getting so freaking loud here. Loud and visually streets. distracting. Look, now there's chicks dancing down there. I noticed that, that the pieces of asses have gotten a lot hotter. Yeah. When we first started broadcasting, it was all just the middle-aged women showing their just just awful cans, but now it looks yep. like all the uh, the younger women are finally out and ready to party, so. Now some of the hotties have shown up. It's getting more and more interesting. This Charles Carroll thing, uh, basically we found out that Charles Carroll, who used to be the host of CBS Sunday Morning before Osgood took over, he had some kind of what, uh, 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 mistress uh, that he would visit on the road or something like yeah, that? Yeah, he had like a steady mistress for years up in Montana, and he used to tell his wife that he was going fishing in his favorite cabin up there. And uh, he used to go see this, what was pretty much amounted to his other wife uh, up there in Montana. Right. So as we go to break, I think we're going to play this. One thing I want to say, you guys want to get Club Soda Kenny on the, on the street with a wireless mic? Oh, wow. Yeah, we should do that, right? 
We can't hear Jim Norton. Jim Norton's mic keeps going out. All right, is it good? Yeah, you're on again. Okay. We should get Club Soda Kenny down there, no? Oh, talk to some yeah, of these people. Yeah. After break, let's uh, we'll go down the street and talk to Club Soda Kenny. He's hanging out with the people on Bourbon Street. But first, here it is, uh, Montana Crotch Rat. <laughs> we leave you now with the sounds of Montana <laughs> and me making my face look like a glazed donut <laughs> before I get back to my wife. The sounds of the elusive bearded clan <laughs> and me trying to shuck the hell out of that bearded clan. <laughs> I usually don't say things like that, but... I'll leave you this Sunday morning with the sounds of me giving her the old pile drive. <laughs> That's the one where I crouch over her, push down real hard in a pile driving motion. <laughs> so now, pictures and sounds of me and the pile drive <laughs> on my mistress in Montana. On the road, the road I prefer... <laughs> Pictures now of the Hershey Highway. <laughs> I visited that in Montana. Lots the Hershey Highway. My wife often thought I was fishing on my trips to Montana. And it's true I was. Here's the sound of the trouser trout <laughs> coming out of my trousers as I pound some ass. And now the sounds of me pounding ass with my Montana crotch rat. <laughs> we leave you now. The sounds of me and my mistress and me shooting a tray up in that piece. <laughs> And now, finally, the sounds of my mistress hobbing my knob. <laughs> we don't often leave you with the sounds of knob hobbing. I figure this is a good time to leave. And now the sounds of me and my knob being hobbed. <laughs> Charles Kuralt on the road. Hob. Knob. <laughs> now the sounds of... A purple helmet warrior <laughs> going into battle again against the dreaded bearded clan. <laughs> Montana crotch rat. <laughs> yes, the Montana crotch rat. God, I wish she shaved. A little personal hygiene in the groin area. So it wouldn't look so much like a possum. Guy, woman looks like roadkill. Looks like the last time I saw woodchuck caught in a combine. All red and brown and whatnot. Now the sounds of a woodchuck being caught in a combine. Leave you. I mentioned she looks like she had... Einstein's head in a leg lock. <laughs> I should trim that. First time I made love to her. Pulled those panties down and looked like Fidel Castro eating a London broil. <laughs> I used to have a lot of sex in my car. Yes, gave her a Spanish fly once. I found her on the gear shift. Now the sounds of my girlfriend on the gear shift. We leave you. Yes. I just wish she was a little better with the hygiene. It sort of looked like when you take two big pieces of silly putty, slap them together, and throw them on the floor of a barber shop. All pink and hairy. We got Gail on D on talking about Opie and Anthony. We're talking about New Orleans, Lady Anna, and all that Opie and Anthony out there. All. The program of Opie and Anthony. Live. And we're back. It's Opie and Anthony broadcasting live from Mardi Gras. It is an absolute zoo down below us, man. We're on the balcony of uh, the Crazy Horse, right? Yes. The zoo up here, too. Jesus Christ. And uh, Jim Norton, as we were in break, just lost his effing mind. I've never seen Norton more pissed off in my life. What happened, Jimmy? Gonna kill we, got, we got we uh, got cups we got to throw down at people, and we got beads. Beads are meant to be whizzed at people. I mean, I think that's fantastic. But this fucking idiot is throwing cups at people, 
and it's like, hey, stupid, we're the only ones with yellow Opie and Anthony cups. Who else has these? They not, couldn't come from anywhere else. You can't waste them at people. Not only that, he he pegged some, I, I think it was a lady an in a wheelchair. Lady in a that wheelchair. was the only thing that kind of like made me not angry, is that he did hurt a person <laughs> in a wheelchair. I was like, all right, well, that's kind of funny. But, but Tom is so just out of it. He's completely hammered, and he's just taking these cups and throwing them as far as you can throw a plastic cup. He has yeah, annoying. Trained. It's really funny because Norton is losing his mind. I mean... It's a known fact that it's a known fact that Norton just hates Tom. No, can't stand him. We all know that. And now Tom is just babbling on a microphone that's not even working. Not even you on. see that? Yeah. Well, actually, it's turned on, but it's actually rebelling against his breath. It shut himself off. Like <laughs> it's like Hal. And I hear you. Yeah. That's right. Good timing. Can you hear oh. me? What's up, Can Tom? Can you hear me? Yes. I don't think Club Soda Kenny likes me too much. He hates you. Like yeah, he wants everyone me, else. He wants me out of here. Yeah, he's going to bounce you in a few minutes. And Norton asked him like he's No, like, you just can't no, throw what, cups what, really what, hard. No, he's, Kenny, he's all right. I hear you is my saying. Don't say it again. Oh. Okay. This is going to be a fight. And Norton was like, well, you know, Tom is kind of cool or not kind of cool, but I thought about Tom and, and I mean, I don't know. What do you think? When did what I say that? The hell and I don't know what's going on. No, you just can't yeah, win well, cups at people because they're going to know it's us. Look at Are they? Look yeah. Benjamin. Okay. Exactly. How many times have you been in the Mardi Gras, Norton? This is my second time. Second time? Yes. Okay. You're a rookie. Oh, he's telling you, Jimmy. Oh, he told you, Jimmy. You I are know. a rookie, Norton. He knows I you're able it. to do that. I hate Mardi Gras. He you are a rookie, to... Norton. Look, why do I do? Oh, oh my God! I licked your head again. Oh, Holy! <laughs> oh my God! But I love you, Norton. I don't actually, mean to laugh. Boy, Norton. Norton, I love you. My headphones. I love you. I love you. I love you. You can't touch me. I hate you. I love you, Norton. But I love you. All right, close oh, now, uh, Kenny is going to... Jimmy, want this piece of shit out of here? Fucking Guy Bannister was not as drunk <laughs> in JFK when he beat up Jack Lemon. Tonight. Visions tonight, Norton. <laughs> Tom is just harassing the hell out of Norton. I have, he, he, he has not changed. In, in, in the couple of years we've, we haven't seen him, he is the same guy. Yeah. He is drunk, belligerent. I love you guys. You know I love you guys. We love you too, Tom. Thank you, Tom. I take, you guys. I'm Tom, well. take a breather. What? Take, take a little breather. Yeah, take in a, a breather. garage yeah. with a All car right. running. Take a nice boy. breather. <laughs> hey. Well, Take a walk for yourself. All right, thank you, Tom. All right, thank you. Tom. He's trying to give us the fist or something. I don't know what he's doing. Kenny will throw him. Don't harass him. another stripper, will you? We're Kenny busy will doing throw a him off of this balcony. We've had one one chick on the balcony so far, and he's been up here the whole time. Like, can, we have, can I stop popping on the microphone every time I say Pete? Don't worry about I it. I apologize. That's, that's the, the least of our problems today. I know today. annoying. It's the least of our problems. Is uh, Tara Patrick on the line? We got Tara Patrick on the line, Anthony. We were supposed to talk to her, what, uh, Friday, I guess. Friday. And we just ran out of show, so we wanted to get her on the air real fast. All right. So she could say hi to us. Tara, what's up? Hey, guys. How's it going? Hi, Tara. Hi. We have to apologize for Friday. We just ran out of show. You guys got stuck in traffic on Long Island, I guess, huh? Yeah. <laughs> of course. And, and I think uh, Evan was very, very mad at us, but there, we had no choice in the matter. They, they cut off the show right at 10 o'clock, so we, there was nothing we could do. Yeah, so don't don't have them beat us up or nothing. Hello? Yeah. Hey, guys, you can't hear you. Can you pass it through better? Uh, we're trying to, uh, we're, we're at Mardi Gras, so it's kind of loud. That's probably why there's so much background noise bleeding through. Yeah. Okay, it's... hold on, hold on. I'm having to try again. All right. Is that Evan? Yeah, that's Evan who oh, was. Uh... Tara. Oh, boy. All right, you know what, Eric? Just Eric, you gotta put, you gotta get them on hold because we can't hear anything, and it's just, a, it's a cluster f as it is here yeah. on Bourbon Street. Uh, she, I guess she's hosting a Mardi Gras party in New York City on Tuesday night. Where? At the Larry Club. Oh wow. Hustler Club, yeah. At Larry the Hustler Flint. Club? Yeah, it's right on Eleventh Avenue. All right, Tara Patrick will be at uh, the Hustler Club, uh, doing a Mardi Gras party in New York City. Tomorrow night, I do believe, right? I'm so annoyed that I'm going to be down here instead of up there. That, that's what we could have had up there, a fucking one of the hottest porn stars ever. And instead, I'm down here with this drunk with awful teeth licking my head. This timing stinks. <laughs> He's licked your head twice so far. He licked, if he would have licked my head no, the second time, he hit the headphones. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the headphones. first time, he took his hand and just went like that. Got a nice slobber on his, like, uh, on his hand. Toxic, and toxic then, waste. And then just wiped it on the back of Norton's uh, skull, so... Disgusting. You At guys, least you know you're not going to get poked by something like a toothbrush bristle <laughs> that might have been in, in his mouth. You know, if I can't find a good escort down here, maybe I'll lay on the bathroom floor and have Tom just lick my chest. It'll be the same thing I've done in New York, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> and he doesn't understand that we really just don't like the guy. 
but he loves us to death. He'll do anything for us. He's one of those kind of guys that really has no real friends, but he has people that he thinks are friends, and we're, we're amongst those people. Yeah. He actually thinks we like him, and we're just goofing on him, but the fact of the matter is he's a repulsive human being that we want no part of. And for some reason, he has nothing to do with XM, right? No. He's got nothing to do with with us, but he has something to do with us broadcasting down here. I have no clue how that happened. Yeah, how did this come about, uh, Ben? Ben, why is he involved with us again? Tom got us the actual space we were broadcasting from. Tom got us this space. Yeah. And Tom's, you know, Tom's very hooked up down here. He now works at Intercom because, remember, he got fired from our last station. Yeah. Because when, when the other jocks were doing appearances, Tom would get drunk and run up on stage and go, I'm Tom from New Orleans. <laughs> and then he got fired as the general manager of the station. So now he's selling ads. But that, there. I understand why we had to deal with him last okay. time because uh, he, was, he was part of the station we were broadcasting from right. down here. But wasn't there someone else we could have gone through to get us a spot here? Now let me tell you something. This is a good spot. We got a good it's setup a great spot. Time. I'm not saying yeah. for some reason that drunken ass has gotten us a really good spot, and I hate the fact that that happened. Could we have gotten somebody who drinks less, like William Holden? <laughs> <laughs> Kenny is just watching him like a hawk right now. Kenny's not happy. And I like Tom. I like the guy, but it's like, stop touching me, dude. I'm not joking. I hate being touched. See, he's the kind of guy that thinks it's a joke. Yeah, I think it's funny. Look, so I'll do it again. I understand how radio works. Well, the problem is he's known as the guy that licks people's head, oh. and we said that on the air, so of course he wants to do he's his thing. got to play it up now. He's got to do his thing, you know? Uh, disgusting. We were going to try to send Club Soda Kenny down to Bourbon Street to talk to the people, but I don't even know if we can possibly do that. It is getting louder and louder here. Yeah, I want Kenny here anyway to watch out and make sure he doesn't come over and touch me. I like you, Norton. All right, thank you, stupid. Norton. Uh, we should send him down there, though. We should yeah. send somebody. I don't know if we'll hear it or anything, but we should talk to some of these whores that are, yeah, definitely. Know, what's the most you would do for, for bees? Wait, here. Things like that. Kenny! Kenny. All, all right, Kenny's going down to the street right now with the wireless mic. Get Master Poe up here to yeah, watch get, this area. Get Poe. He'll he'll take Tom's throat out. That was so funny. I, I guess Poe is giving lessons on how to make weapons. Oh, apparently. yeah, we got to talk about that at yeah. uh, Newark Airport. We had about an hour and a half to kill, so we went to the diner. And Poe's whole thing is, whoever he meets, he has to pretty much tell everyone how tough he is, okay? Yeah. I, I noticed this about Poe. And, uh, and then he has to give everyone that comes to the XM studio in New York uh, lessons on how to defend themselves. And one of his things is that you could, you could kill somebody or hurt someone with just a piece of paper. Improvised weapons are his big thing. So he was at the restaurant saying how he could make a deadly weapon out of a placemat. Right. You know, the paper placemats you get at a restaurant. Right. And I guess he showed everybody? No, he ne but that's the problem. He just says, you know, you could, uh, you could pretty much hurt or kill somebody with just a piece of paper. You have and, to wrap a gun in it. And, and, and I was thinking, well, if you're in a confrontation with somebody and, and you don't have much time to think, I don't think the move would be to take a piece of paper and start folding it into a weapon. Folding it. Was that what it is? You could fold it into a spike or something? I guess we're going to have to maybe have him explain when we're back into a, a normal broadcast environment when we get back to New York, but he swears that you can hurt someone really bad with just a piece of paper. You know, you, you, hurt somebody, you know how you hurt somebody with a piece of paper? You make it a contract and you put Tom's name on it. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and, and the weird thing about New York Airport, we're at the diner and you know, you go through security and they're checking for weapons and stuff and, and they're, and they're x-raying everything, right? Yeah. And then we sit down for a nice meal, and we're using, um, you know, metal forks. Yeah. I'm like, oh, that doesn't seem too smart. If it they're beats the purpose. Well, they're worried about your nail clippers and all that stupid stuff when um, when you're going through security. And then you get through security, and then there's plenty of weapons abound. Yeah, then uh, Poe picks up the plastic knife, and he goes, you could even use this as a weapon. And we're like, how? He goes, you slit their eye. You slit their eye with the plastic uh, knife. Slit their eye? And Kenny's like, but that's a really small target, you know? Yeah, you kind of want to go for big targets. Exactly. All right, Club Soda Kenny is down on the street. He's 6'5". He's big and stupid. He's wow, turning on his mic. I don't even know if this is going to work. I think the wireless is having a problem. Yeah, yeah, cut the wireless. It ain't going to happen. Oh, wait. We got to turn. We got to. I don't know if this is going to work. We got to put the hey, what's up? Oh, we got it. We got it. Now, Kenny's. All right. 
All right, now, let's, let's another thing that's not going to work today. Uh, don't tell him it's not working, though. Just keep looking at him and smiling, and he'll let him talk to a few people. Yeah, do that. Do that. Just let him go. Yeah, yeah. that's hysterical. He's yeah. wandering around. No one can hear you, stupid. Look, he's talking to me. Let's throw beads at him. Oh, oh, you just hit that guy in the head. Oh, very close. All right. Kenny, All right, Kenny. Kenny's wandering around. Kenny, good job. Keep thumbs upping him. I just gave him a thumbs up. He's, he's walking over to a beautiful girl now, and, and she's talking, and we have no idea what she's saying because no. the wireless doesn't go far enough. I'm going to try to hit him with these beads when he comes back. I got a big fistful of colorful, festive beads. This girl's on a bicycle. Oh, watch. Let me hit Kenny. Oh, I got him in the arm. All right, well, that goes you know on. Something? It wouldn't be a broadcast from Mardi Gras if it wasn't a clusterfuck. Wow, look at that girl. She's completely topless with her uh, boobies uh, painted. She's got wow. pink Very hair. Very nice. Very big breasts. Are we getting video of this stuff? Oh, or there's one across the street. Where's Martini Steve? Is he filming this stuff? No, he is I think filming there's this? there's a gang rape going on down there. Yeah, it's kind of crazy when a girl like that, uh, you know, walks by completely topless. And, I mean, guys swarm around and, and, and gets a little uh, a little crazy down there. Yeah, looks a little risky for the girls, but eh, that's what it's all about. It's that's a good right. look. It's a good look. Wow, those are big pants she got painted. Yeah, let's see if we can knock her drink over. There you go, whore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whore. All right. Nice um, people just enjoying the festivities. Oh, did I ever tell you about my friend when I used to hang out with this bodybuilder named Stanley? I was 13 and his brother Mike. Is I think he I real or was he like Helen? He was a made-up one. He would come in a cape and rescue me. <laughs> no, me, Stanley. Stanley was like 25 and Mike was like 13 my age. We would all play video games together. It was like a molesting wait and it happened, but Sam was just a nice guy. <laughs> but Michael was a sociopath, so we would ride around and throw things at people. And one time he had re- we used to like get like Cool Whip cans, Cool Whip uh, buckets, and, oh, right. and put hot motor oil in them. And uh, I remember we were driving by some guy without his shirt, and Mike goes, hey, Stanley, let's leak some motor oil in it and throw it on his chest. And we drove by this chick one time, and they had some Chinese food mustard, and Mike goes, hey, whore, have some mustard. And he threw it at her, and he smashed her right in the face with Chinese mustard. <laughs> one time we were in a pickup truck, and they had a couch in the back, so he lit the couch on fire and pushed it out onto the highway, <laughs> hoping somebody would crash into it and be killed. What, a, what an ass. Uh, hey, whore, have some mustard. My favorite thing ever. What an absolute ass. That's kind of what this is like, winging things down. You think I can yeah. hit her cup out of her hand or that guy's cup? Damn, I'm short. That's stunk. You're yeah. out of practice. I love the looks you get from these people uh, after you hit them with the beads. Oh, yeah. look at that. It's Those girls look like they uh, washed up on a Phuket beach. <laughs> A lot of those going on. The festivities really, really getting underway now. Uh, when do they shut down the traffic? Because there's still a lot of cars driving through here. We keep throwing things in their windows, <laughs> hoping, hoping to knock out the driver so he hits the gas and runs over a crowd of people right in front of us. I think we should take another break. All right. And we'll regroup. Eric, just play whatever you want going into break. Because I, I, I can't even hear myself. It's getting louder and louder. What, Ben? You're, you're cool. And we're back to the Opie and Anthony program live from Mardi Gras. And we're broadcasting here. Why? <laughs> at this point, it's a party, Opie. Because it's a huge party. party. We're at the Crazy Horse. We're on a balcony. Uh, it's just getting crazy. And now it's starting to rain. Yeah, the rain of... has come. Uh, some, uh, some of the people scattering the, rain the almost, sides of the road. It almost feels like an act of God just to clear the shithole out. <laughs> <laughs> Wash away the stink. Well, we got uh, Big and Stupid on Bourbon Street right now. He's on the wireless mic. Is it going to work now? Hey! Club Soda Kenny is on the street, and uh, he's going to talk to some people. Let's see if this works. Jaime said it's going to work. Am I good? Yeah, You're good. Now we hear right. you. I'm on the street. I'm going to talk. Hey, talk. Hello. Mardi Gras. Mardi Gras rules. Where are you from? <laughs> Iowa. Right in Iowa farmer. See ya. <laughs> you want to talk on the radio? Say hello. Hi. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes! I just announced her in the face. Message. Holy shit. Hey, dumb as shit. Hi. Whoa, I have no voice. No, I'm a fucking hungover chick. Hi. He's just mugging All right, people. I'm finding a lot of people. Everybody's throwing stuff at me. Yeah, that's not cool. He is just mugging people. Yeah, oh, good. It'll be an improvement. He was Let talking me talk to, a to girl. some more chicks. I hit her right in the Here, face. Here, say hello on the radio. Hi. The trick is to hit the girls he's talking to. <laughs> yeah. He just hit right on the head. 
Come on, say hello. Oh, God. <laughs> that just hit the mic. Anthony just nailed the Jimmy microphone. Florida. Good for you. Good for you. Hello. Come on, talk to someone. Hello. Hello. Oh, damn. Yeah, you want to say something from my Can you stand light? What? Oh, you're an asshole. <laughs> what is he doing? <laughs> He's still fucking throwing them at me. Want to say hello on the radio? Get up here. <laughs> All right, that's you gotta yeah. hit the people in the face that he's talking to. All right, I'm gonna scream. find some more people. Right. Wait, here's I'm another fact. Live right, from right, right right Hi, am I ready? Hit her in the face. What's up? What's going on? Hey, what's <laughs> you listen now on the XM. Here. Absolutely. Where are you from? New Orleans. Good for you. Great. Here you go. Have I'm some mustard, whore. <laughs> Yes, Texas. Yeah. Did you show anybody your tits yet? <laughs> no, I'm not. She did. You did. No. All right. Close to Kenny's getting completely attacked by the bees. Show him your tits. I need some good bees. Don't right. throw your bees. No. All right, get us out of this, Jaime. Thank you. We have crappy beads to give out. That's that is really funny. All the sounds you were hearing were the beads hitting the girls in the face. As Club Soda Kenny's trying to interview them. It's it's starting to rain pretty bad out there. It's turning into like a wet t-shirt contest now. And that's not a, a good thing. No. And it's getting louder and louder. We could try to do the Michael Jackson audio thing. Oh, Mike, yeah. Uh, Geraldo talked to Michael Jackson. I was... Um, I was, of course, you know, sequestered in my room, Opie, for the past couple of days that we've been here. And uh, I was watching a VH1 thing on Michael Jackson. And um, they had video of him uh, from private moments. It was this videographer that just used to be, I guess, one of Michael's friends and would videotape some of the stuff. Did you see that, Jimmy? Martin Bashir, the one that got him in all the hot water. Very good. Yes. There is a video of him dancing with Lil Webster up in up in his some room. And uh, he was... Doing Michael Jackson dances with Webster, it was the creepiest thing ever. This little Webster's grabbing his crotch and dancing around, and uh, that whole thing. Remember when he kind of had a relationship with um, with Brooke Shields? Oh yeah, yeah took yeah, her yeah. to an awards show. Sure. But instead of taking Brooke up on stage with him when he won an award, he took Little Webster with him. Uh, that whole thing ended, and I never knew this because he tried to take check into a hotel. With Webster Get as, out of here. as father and son, and that's when the Webster's parents went, "No, that's that's it. You're not hanging out with Michael Jackson anymore." This creep is trying to check into a hotel with Lil Webster. <laughs> Why? He should have just wa- he should have grabbed Webster and had Webster carry like a little thing that he churned. Gagong, 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 gagong. And music comes out, have yeah. a pump, and people throw money into it. That little creep. He should have molested Webster. Little fat face tease. But that is what Michael Jackson is, a predator. Yeah. Oh, what is this? Oh, good. This Adding is the, the police noise. department. Wow, people Tooling get down the, the middle of Bourbon Street. Wow, these guys don't even slow down for people. Look at this. Why is Grady from Sanford and Son <laughs> hanging out the back of that truck? <laughs> I've seen more Grady's from Sanford and Son in this city. Well, do you want to try to play some of the audio from um, uh, the Geraldo interview? Yeah, Michael Jackson seems to go on Geraldo a lot on Fox News because Geraldo is actually supporting him. And you can't find another outlet for someone to kiss his ass. It's not really stupid on Geraldo's part. Geraldo knows Michael Jackson's going to come on. It's going to give him rating. For a second, if you think Geraldo supports Michael Jackson, uh, you're on drugs. Geraldo knows the guy's a predator. Geraldo's got kids. Would he let his kids stay with Michael Jackson? I'd like somebody to ask him that. Well, uh, we could just try to play some of these clips, see what happens. We got Geraldo uh, talking to Michael Jackson about the history of the raids at Neverland Ranch. Ooh. You want to go to that clip and see the what raids. happens here? Nice. All right, let's play this. Sadly for Michael Jackson, Neverland Ranch, this fantasy world he created back in 1988 to celebrate his vision of himself as a kind of modern-day Peter Pan, has too often been sullied by harsh reality. Twelve years ago, when the King of Pop was performing overseas, This 2,800-acre spread in a remote section of Santa Barbara County was raided for the first time. Since then, law enforcement officials have often come bursting through these lovely gates. Sometimes, the defense argues, they've come just to make a point, and perhaps also to make some news. Example, the widely covered December 3rd raid to obtain a sample of Michael's DNA, a sample they obtained without any hoopla at all in private the very next day. In the words of one legal pundit, Neverland has been searched more often than the Pakistan-Afghanistan border. Neverland is as unique as the man who built it. 
a shrine celebrating an innocent ideal that over the years has been crushed and sullied by allegation, rumor, and innuendo. Now, as the current case against him unfolds, Michael Jackson knows for a certainty that the district attorney will spin every child-friendly attraction, from the statues, to the rides, to the exotic animals, into a kind of malevolent child trap. And this despite the fact that over the years, thousands of mostly inner-city children have enjoyed this place without incident. Yet he knows that what you see in this place, innocence or evil, is in the eye of the beholder. Oh, are you kidding me? Do you hear this guy defending about, oh, just because every child that went there wasn't molested? Yeah. Then uh, none of them were. Evil is in the eye of the beholder, or in this case, evil is in the brown eye of the child. <laughs> Scumbag Geraldo. <laughs> yeah, there's Geraldo backing him up. Like the police are doing this for publicity. Uh, no. I think if you pay off a child's family to uh, not go to court about molestation charges, I think there's a problem there. I think if you're sleeping with children and you're... Uh, a 40-year-old man? Yeah, I think there's a problem there. I think Geraldo is uh, doing this for the reasons he gave uh, uh, for the police breaking into that place. For publicity, of course. How could the guy... And, and Self-respecting, that's why. I was going to say, how could any self-respecting guy... The guy obviously has no self-respect, Geraldo. He's a media whore. He's doing this just to get ratings. And uh, I think Michael Jackson's pretty screwed. Jury selection, I guess, is uh, still going on. There's yeah. going to be another circus when the trial starts. I was reading in the paper that it's costing like $40,000 a day to, to put this uh, case on. That's great. Out there in California. Yeah, $40,000 a day because of all the security and all that that they need to do to, yeah. to uh, you know, get the case rolling. You want to try another clip here? Want to try uh, uh, Jackson Life at the Ranch with his kids? All right. With all right. It's kids. from... Geraldo's exclusive interview with Michael Jackson. Our interview was conducted at a friend's recording studio on the 19th of January. Here it begins. So how are you doing? I'm doing fine, Geraldo. How are you? Despite whatever goes on in the world, you feel okay? I'm doing very well, thank you. You know, it's wonderful seeing you with the children. That, I think, is the real Michael Jackson that has not been seeing you with your own children, born in diapers, the other two toddlers. I don't know how you manage without a nanny. Well, I enjoy taking care of my children myself. It's, it's fun. That's why I had them, so I could take care of them. And uh, it's just it's great relief for me. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's pleasure. It keeps me happy and laughing. And they're wonderful, sweet, innocent children. They really are. I, I saw you as kind of the uh, the arbitrator between the Nickelodeon channel and the Disney <laughs> channel there. That was <laughs> yeah, you, you know, you get some really difficult problems to solve yeah, there. Yes. Yeah. But you have such a, a kind of a normal life there it's it's sweet to see thank you but they, they bring me that you know you tell me life. tell me what the children need you, your own children they mean it's hard to put into words because they mean everything the way you would explain how your children make you feel i mean they're the world for me i mean i wake up and i'm ready for the day because of them i give them breakfast i change diapers um if they want to read uh, we do a lot of reading we play hide and seek we play blindfold and have a wonderful time with them and you can uh, create a, a, a world that at least begins to seem normal. I mean, they don't know any other world, obviously. But I real I do my best for sure. So that is obviously a priority to you. Yes, of course. I want to be the best father in the world, of course. Do they know who you are or what you mean to people? Yes, they do. They've been on tours with me and in limousines and among sea of fans. And... Do they like it? They, yeah, they, they find it exciting. They do. <laughs> they want to get on stage. They, they bug me to go on stage with me. So pretty soon I'm going to take them on with me. Let the, the world see them for the first time. They're going to say, Daddy, I want to go home and watch Nickelodeon? <laughs> Probably. Probably. They do that too. Yes. They say the reason Michael Jackson has children is the same reason that drug addicts grow their own pots. <laughs> For your own head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that awful? And Geraldo just defending him. Oh, to see you with the children. That's the real Michael right. Jackson, isn't it? Yeah, well, that's what everyone's saying, and that's why there's going to be a trial. <laughs> with the children is a real Michael Jackson. Changing diapers? Is he talking about his own kids or the blood he's got to change out of his victims? <laughs> what an awful, awful man. Yeah. Geraldo backing him up, sticking, trying to present him in a normal light. Oh, isn't that the only type of normalcy you see as a person? Are you kidding me? 
the guy is is going on trial not because it's the first time it happened because this just happens over and over again yeah i like reading with my kids yeah we like reading together yeah see there is nothing wrong read this paragraph there's nothing wrong with man boy love he's got those magazines with the fingerprints of kids and him on it child porno magazines of course he loves reading to the kids it's a it's a new pop-up book called snitches get stitches <laughs> <laughs> this is what happens when you tattle on uncle michael <laughs> all right well it's my new suck and spell book <laughs> See Dick run right into your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's try another clip here. Uh, Jackson talking about his private life. I think it's track uh, six there, Eric. Let's listen to this from the exclusive interview with Geraldo Rivera, Michael Jackson. When you have such intense scrutiny, how do you live any kind of normal life? How do you, you know, have any fun outside of your own property? I don't. I go off property sometimes, but not all the time. I create my world behind the gates, you know, because I can't go to the local movie theater down the street or the local park down the street or go pick up ice cream at the market, the corner store. So you want to create that world behind the gates. And um, that's what I try and do. And it's not just uh, for me if I could share with my family or friends or whoever I do. You know? And that necessity for some privacy drives all these uh, these these crazy rumors and speculations. So it's a difficult balancing act that you have to endure. Yes, yes. Part of what comes with celebrity. You know? But you're not complaining, are you? I don't. I try to, you know, <laughs> rub it off. Not that I'm... I don't know what I'm the king of. <laughs> the king of getting shot at, maybe. No, 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 no. <laughs> king of journalism. Wow. Oh, unbelievable. You know why he can't go down to the local movie theater? Because they don't show Chicken Hawk at Lowe's. You have to order it off the internet. <laughs> Faggot. He is just despicable. And, and to have Geraldo in his corner cheering him on on, on a, a very popular news network... The guy knows what he's doing. He's getting the ratings. Michael Jackson thinks he's going to be vindicated uh, because Geraldo Rivera agrees with him. Yeah. Give me a break. And, you know, he brought up an interesting point there. It seems like Michael Jackson says he can't act like a normal person outside of the gates of Neverland. He feels alienated and, and out of place outside those gates. So I think he actually feels he could do whatever he wants. If, if I can't live with your laws outside my gates, right. then I'll make up my own inside. And whatever he does in inside his own gates is it, it's his world you know his whole b bullshit peter pan thing that, that they keep bringing up and uh i think he honestly feels he could do whatever he wants in there and what he's been doing is molesting children and uh man after this trial i from what i've seen it looks pretty grim for the guy yep and i think michael jackson in prison is going to be some of the most entertaining stuff to speculate on Ever. It's going to make for some great radio bits, I'll tell you. That is some big prisoner telling Michael to moonwalk into his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, man, get on your knees and beat it. <laughs> All right, we got another uh, uh, cut here. Michael Jackson talking about another children. What? Cut? I didn't hear oh, you. a cut. Uh, Michael Jackson talking about children in distress, Anthony, from the Geraldo uh. Rivera exclusive interview. Let's listen to this. Michael Jackson sounds a lot like shitty music across the street. <laughs> Michael Jackson sounds like a drunk yelling Opie's name from the street. Are they drinking back in New York, too? Yeah, I, I think they're having a Mardi Gras uh, party over there. What track, sorry? Uh, track seven. Okay, here we children go. Children in Distress. Here we go. All so right. what is it about children in distress? You mentioned the tsunami relief effort. Yeah. Yeah. What, it, what is it? Is it, is it your own fatherhood that motivates that? Caring. And reading the Bible, learning about God, Jesus, love. Jesus said, bring on the children, imitate children, you know, be like little children. And uh, to take care of others, take care of old people. And we were raised with those values. Those are very important values in my family and I. We were raised with those values and they continue strong in us today. Oh, no, raised with those values. Michael, he didn't say children in distress. He said, why do you have children in this dress? <laughs> <laughs> ah, very good. So, um, we can try one more clip here. It's kind of hard to 
I can't even hear these yeah. clips really. It's so loud. How about uh, Jackson? Uh, I think this is cut 14. Jackson Elo's uh, daughter, Jackson, are you talking about? Or, or Michael? Michael? Michael Jackson. Oh, okay. Sorry. Elo was telling me that he's starting to email pictures of his little daughter to, to Norton over and over again, like every day. Does You're he just mean regular mail and he calls it email because it's Elo <laughs> sending it? Or does he mean the actual computer email? I never got any, um, what is Eric's uh, email address? I never got an email from him. Wow. There's another stripper going to work, I guarantee it. What is what's written on her ass? I can't tell. Hol hot ass or something like that? Holla? Oh. Hottie. Hottie bitch or something like that. Wow. Yeah, she's gotta be going to a club. It looks like she's uh, a stripper going Much to work. Too hot to be walking with this rabble. Why don't we uh, go to track fourteen, Eric? This is Michael Jackson talking about uh, giving to the children. Yeah. Giving to the your children. Your homes. I mean for all the grandeur of Neverland, your home is quite modest. It's and, and your personal style, I don't see any bling, for instance. Yeah, How come? How can you have a big diamond thing that says Michael? <laughs> because I'm, I'm modest in that way. And if I had it on, I would probably give it away from the first kid who would walk up to me and say, Wow, I like your necklace here. You can have it. Because when I was little, uh, stars like Sammy Davis, Fred Astaire, you know, Gene Kelly, if I admired something they were wearing, if I simply said, God, I love that shirt you're wearing, they would give it to me. So I was taught that, you know, that's part of a show business trait, you know, to hand it over. Despite the, the glare of the media attention, and even the day you, that I was there and you invited the inner city kids there, what's it like to have the kids there? Why do you do that? I wanted to ask you that question that, that day, but I pose it to you now. Why? Why do you, when you, yeah, when you see those kids, tell me what's going on. Because I think I've traveled the world over eight times around the world. And I go to hospitals. I do as many hospitals and orphanages as I do concerts. But of course, it's not covered. Uh, that's not why I do it for coverage. I do it because it's from my heart. And there are so many children in the cities who've never seen the mountains, who haven't been on a carousel, who haven't petted a horse or a llama, who've never seen them. So when I, if I can open my gates and those gates open and that bliss explosion of screaming and laughter from the children and they run past the breeze they run on the rides I say thank you God I feel I want God's smile of approval you know because I'm doing something that brings joy and happiness to other people he's delusional and I know what happened by the way yeah because he was saying that if, if a child wants something they'll give him like the shirt or whatever so the child must have said gee I really admire your underpants and all that stuff that's built up in your testicles I sure would like it and I felt I had to give to the children. I felt like I had to give. He didn't have a shirt on his back, so I put some seeds on it. <laughs> and he goes, I've been around the world eight times, and I visit children, you know, in homes and in hospitals and orphanages. It's like a Home Depot for him, the world, <laughs> just going around various places, like a smorgasbord. Well, the beautiful thing about going like to Africa is all you got to do is put a little chocolate on your mule and 30 kids will run over. <laughs> <laughs> the hungrier they are, the happier he is. <laughs> oh, man, you're a mess. Good, right, we luck. Got, Good luck, Michael. We got one more track. It's it's uh, It sums up the whole thing. It's the exclusive interview with Geraldo Rivera. Michael Jackson, it's his statement, Anthony. The money shot, I, you, when you said it sums up the whole thing, I thought you meant a money shot on a hairless little face. <laughs> It's uh, Michael Jackson addressing the charges against him. So, All right. Let's go to this. This is track 18. Finally, you know, we studiously avoided the case. We've not talked at all about the case that's pending. You're under this gag order. I know that you have received the permission from the judge to read a statement. Yes. You know, I hate to end an interview that way, but if you'd like to read that statement now, I think it's important. Sure. In the last two weeks, a large amount of ugly, malicious information has been released into the media about me. Apparently, this information was leaked through transcripts in a grand jury proceeding where neither my lawyers nor I ever appeared. The information is disgusting and false. Years ago, I allowed a family to visit and spend time in Neverland. Neverland is my home. I allowed this family into my home because they told me their son was ill with cancer and needed my help. Through the years, I helped thousands of children who were ill or in distress. These events have caused a nightmare for my family, my children, and me. I never intend to place myself in so vulnerable a position ever again. I love my community, and I have great faith in our justice system. Please keep an open mind and let me have my day in court. 
I deserve a fair trial like every other American citizen. I will be acquitted and vindicated when the truth is told. Anything else you'd like to say? Uh, no, no, no. Uh, yes, there is something. Um, I would love to have uh, the public's uh, prayers for my children and myself. Okay, buddy, you got it. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah, pray for him. Yeah. Pray for your victims. And uh, the poor kid with cancer, that's how Michael got him, by the way. Yeah. He said, look, you see these two things? There's chemo in them. Put this in your mouth oh, and God. drink your medicine. <laughs> Here's a magical cure. It's Jesus juice. He called up the Make-A-Wish Foundation. He's like, uh, yeah, you got anyone with uh, washboard abs who's under 12 who coughs a lot? <laughs> So no. then, I mean, this is horrible stuff, clear stuff that's leaking out. Talking about his leaks. So, you think he's going to get off? I mean, he's uh, gotten off, well, obviously. Has, but yeah. but, no, up, up. but uh, I think this time, if, there, if there's any truth to the allegations against him, uh, then he'll go away. I think unless it is completely false and he can prove it, uh, he's got to go to jail. You know, from the, the horrible, disgusting things that have leaked out, you know, he's got, he's got to... It sounds like you're talking about the O.J. Simpson trial. You know that, right? I know. This is all the same stuff that everyone talked about when O.J., you know, committed those two murders. It and seemed obvious that he was guilty, but money money has a strange way of really distorting the uh, the justice system. And, and But he's done it already. This is like... This is like if O.J. hooked up with another blonde and she was found dead on O.J.'s doorstep with a slit throat, O.J.'s blood all over the place again. It would be a little hard for him to explain it again. Uh, Michael Jackson's already done it once. He's paid it off. Uh, now it's happening again. I think this is really difficult for him to, to explain it away like, uh, you know, he's being set up again. You think they got some just great evidence they're going to finally... Uh, I think they do. I think Michael Jackson, who now is saying he's never going to put himself in this position again, uh, he, why didn't he say it last time? He already spent millions of dollars for one kid that he, he uh, supposedly molested and uh, paid him off. Why wouldn't he, after that instance knock all this crap off of sleeping with kids and inviting kids over. And if you're going to invite kids over, he he tries to put in one category, inviting sick kids over to play at a, an amusement park that he owns in the same boat as him sleeping with kids in his bed and playing games. It's not the same thing. If you invited sick kids over to play at your house, at your amusement park, that's fine. You have people there, doctors, nurses, whatever other staff is appropriate oh, to yeah, take care of the kids, to chaperone sure. them. You're never alone with the kids. Right, right. That's taking care of kids. If he really is this guy who just wants to take care of children, that's fine. Put all these things in place, especially after you've been accused once already. But he didn't. He's still dragging them up to his bedroom with a secret doorbell and locks on the doors and that's why he's screwed again why because he did it because he's guilty because he's a pedophile a molester and a predator allegedly uh no i'm saying definitely i know i'm just throwing that in we'll see if he uh sues me go ahead michael yeah. sue me sue opie for saying that i dare you <laughs> yeah all opie would have to do is shave a little hair off his ass and <laughs> And, uh, hey, look, Mike. I like Opie. He's blonde. Let's all relax. Yeah, he would really like you. Let's all relax. All right, well, wow, look at this thing. Guy or girl, can't what even tell from that? here. I don't know what that is. I don't know. All right, we're live at uh, Mardi Gras. Crazy yeah. one. It's Bourbon Street. It's raining. People are getting drunk. It's raining. Oh. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's a mess. Yeah, it is. But uh, I like the smell that's now wafting up from the steaming street from the rain. Mmm. That's, that's nice. The, that was actually Tom talking. <laughs> <laughs> so what, what are we these break? guys? That, this guy's got, like, they got doctor scrubs on, and he's got a big dildo sticking out of his pants, and he's beating girls with it as they walk down the sidewalk. He just beat the ass of that hot blonde right there. That is wonderful. But pretty much anything goes at Mardi Gras. We've seen yeah. that. I think when we come back, we should start a, a bead war with that other balcony over there. You want to start wailing something? We better get some artillery because they really have a, a lot of big, heavy beads. We got like little BB beads. We've run the out. Girls of, don't even want them. I think we've ran out of beads. Yeah. So we'll continue in just a bit. Eric, get us out of here. Live from Mardi Gras. Oh, oh, a oh gosh. Oh, the virus. The OP. I was. I thought of you guys. This, I was at my parents' house for Christmas. And Thanks, the, Peter. The very Brady Christmas was on Ooh, from '88, yeah. mm -hmm. and it was just. It was so funny because Peter and, and Bobby were sharing the living room, and Peter had on a nightshirt. And I'm like, who wears a who ever in this 
at least from like after 1850, has worn a nightshirt. A nightshirt. And you can't look at Robert Reed do anything without noticing how gay he is now. You... <laughs> Peter! Peter! What is this with this sexy little nightshirt on, Peter? Because it's no fun unless I can pull something up in the back. <laughs> That's why the, uh, all the Brady boys wear the nightshirts. He just gave up uh, acting straight. Because I think in the uh, the original series, you can I, I don't think you could tell at all, but you're right. These later episodes and specials that came out, he just said, ah, screw oh, it. Those scenes I am what I am, and here it is. Those scenes where he's laying in bed with Carol at the end of the show, doing the little show closer, and they have to make like they're a loving married couple. It's like, oh, my God. Oh, oh, Carol, come here. Let me give you a, uh, a kiss, I guess. Smell that vagina from up here. <laughs> Ew. Um, mind if I sleep in the boys' room tonight, Carol? <laughs> Greg, do you think I could shove that big horse sculpture at the bottom of the stairs up my ass? Let's try. There's one scene where one of the Brady kids, like one of their kids, like whether it was Marsha's little eight-year-old redheaded son, slid down the banister and Robert Reed was at the bottom to catch him. <laughs> I'll catch you. Come on down. Oh, he's coming so fast. And so am I. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I love those boys. Ugh. Stupid. Girls, you okay? All right, good night. Hi, boys. Let me tuck in and read you a little story. Once upon a time, there was a homosexual actor playing a dad. Well, I understand that he would molest Bobby and Greg, but he wouldn't molest Peter because Peter wasn't mechanically inclined. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, why don't you put on the Phil Packer mustache you wore in episode 33 and, uh, you know... You tickle my little member down here with that mustache. Ooh. All right, boys, we're going to play Steal the Playbook. I put it in my pants. Now you boys got to steal it so Greg can read the plays. And... Ooh. I've rolled up these plans and put them in this tube. Now you've got to hide them in me. <laughs> XM202 The O.B. and Anthony Show And we're back It's the O.B. and Anthony program Live from Mardi Gras, New Orleans Crazy Horse, Balcony, Beads Tits Everything People getting uh, pelted by mugs from Tom Tom never cooled it by the way He's been uh He's been just pegging people as they walk by with the Opie and Anthony mugs. That's, that's going to be great later on when we get punched in the face. Are you Opie? Yeah. Pow! Blah! Blam! Blah! We got a lot of uh, fans here. It's unbelievable. A lot of people stopping by saying hi. They got the uh, Opie and Anthony t-shirts on and signs. and It's just absolutely crazy. What's up, Ben? Hey, that girl's got a, a red hurricane. Where? Wait, I got some green thing. I want a red hurricane. What's, God damn it. What's the green thing? A, 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 a hand grenade or whatever they're called? Oh, a hand grenade. It's a hand grenade. What about the hurricane? Yeah, the hurricanes are the red ones. We need a few hurricanes. We need some hurricanes. You sent Tom out. What do you expect? I know, and he came back. It's a, don't send him again. He'll probably spit in it as a joke. By the way, Norton is late coming back to the broadcast because I saw him in the hall. Like, negotiating with one of the strippers. I don't know what the hell's Are going on. Are you kidding on. already? Norton, I noticed you were negotiating with one of the one of the fine young ladies that uh, works here at the Crazy Horse. Well, I asked somebody how much a lap dance was, and they, and they said for uh, for up here it's $40. Are you kidding? Yeah. Wow. So I said lap dance not happening. They got Aww. some very interesting uh, rooms up here. They're kind of like cubicles with just couches in them. You yeah, know? Now, now hey, you, know, you don't know what's happening, though, Jimmy. What's that? That might be a bargain. I know what's happening. <laughs> he knows what's happening. <laughs> yeah. Are you going to uh, taste the local fare while you're down here? Yeah, I'm going to walk around and uh, see what's going on. Yeah. I want to lap dance badly. By the way, where are we eating dinner tonight on Anthony's tab? I'm paying. You pick this plate. I don't care where we go. I just don't want to walk through, like, you know, masses like that. No, we figured this Find out. A good spot. You, you get off Bourbon Street, and it gets much cooler. You go up to, like, Decatur, up by where the House of Blues is. That's where it is. Find, a good, find a good spot. We had a great time Let's at go. House of Blues the first night we were here. And, and then we found out Greg Allman's playing tomorrow night. I think we're going to go check that out after the broadcast At the tomorrow. House of Blues? Yeah, yeah. we got tickets for uh, wow. Greg Allman tomorrow night. Yeah, Very cool. Let's go. That's going to be awesome. And then we found this 
dive bar that was pretty cool with the jukebox. That's Stan Aykroyd's favorite bar in the country. Really? That's how, yeah. That's it's like a, a complete dive, though, man. There was, there was nothing going on in there, but the music was great. When the House of Blues was getting built here in New Orleans, that's where everyone hung out, all the celebrities. That's where they still all go when they're in New Orleans. Right on. Um, Anthony, we got to talk about the Vermont Teddy Bear Company. We're doing live reads on the show. The show getting more gooder by the day, Anthony. Much more gooder. Yeah, Valentine's Day, right? Well, you got to do something for your sweetie. You got to get her something. And don't get the flowers, the chocolate. What are you going to do? Get the Brax chocolate? You're going to go into the uh, into the pharmacy last minute, get that little heart-shaped box of Brax? No. Some ass one year told me I, I, I should get a, uh, a heart-shaped necklace. Remember that? Oh, that, that's true. Who that was that? awful, awful Valentine's Day that you and I spent drinking in some bar in the middle of Ashland? Valentine's Day is really difficult to pick out something special, something memorable, something that seems like you put the personal touch in. And guys panic. One year I was asking around, they said, oh, man, heart-shaped necklace, that's the way to go. I think it was thrown in my face. And then I called up Anthony, and we got hammered on, uh, yep. what was it, Route 9 in Ashland or somewhere up there? Yep. Or in, uh, what the hell were we? Framingham, maybe? or Framingham or Westboro, whatever. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah so, uh, so we're saying no flowers, no stupid chocolates. Well, if you want to do the chocolate bear combo, that's not a bad thing. Yeah, because if you just get the chocolate, they eat the chocolate, it's gone, and then where's the memory of, of the love that you gave her? That and year? they get fatter anyway if they eat just chocolate. Right. Have some celery, you slob, and hold your bear. <laughs> We've never heard uh, complaints when somebody has, you know, tried the Vermont teddy bear thing. So it's got personality, and it could be, you know, there's so many bears to choose from. You can customize it to your loved one. They got the lover boy bear, heart-shaped love tattoo, the gangster love, the heartthrob bear wearing boxer shorts, the mysterious love bandit, or the uh, officially licensed new playboy bear with a smoking jacket martini glass. If you're romantic, send the Cupid bear or the Romeo bear. And you could also uh, get bears that are uh, linked to their occupation or hobby, something like heart-shaped uh, heart racer bear or love handle bear dressed like a trucker. Best of all, she'll think of you every time she hugs her little bear. Shop at VermontTeddyBear.com or call one of their friendly bear counselors, 1-800-829-BEAR. They're going to deliver it with free chocolate and a gift card in their famous Vermont Teddy Bear box. For about the price of a dozen roses, the Vermont Teddy Bear keeps giving and giving. Vermont Teddy Bear, they're the only bears handmade in America and guaranteed for life. Send the bear to the office so when uh, it arrives, should be all surprised. Our coworkers are going to go, what a great guy this guy is. Of course, Vermont teddy bear. Opie? Yeah, make this the best Valentine's Day ever with the gifts you'll really love and always remember. Call 1-800-829-BEAR. That's 1-800-829-BEAR. Or shop online at vermontteddybear.com. You can do that today. Overnight and Valentine's Day delivery guaranteed as well. That's 1-800-829-BEAR. If you call that number, make sure you tell the fine folks at Vermont Teddy Bear that Opie and Anthony sent you. And I quickly just want to welcome those guys to the program. Very cool that they're back on board with yes. us. Yes. All right. Uh, I don't know. I guess we're kind of wrapping up the festivities Festivities here from Mardi Gras. Festivus, Jerry. Festivus, I can't Festivus, even hear Jerry. myself. Yeah, so what are we really doing tonight? We're going to check out the, the dancers here for a while? I think what we'll do is kind of hang around a little bit after the show, go inside, check out some of the dancers. I want to see how that uh, dancer that's on the rag uh, moves. I, I want to see that moves. whole thing <laughs> out, right? To keep uh, <laughs> from any leakage. <laughs> After she gets off the stage, it looks like a Japanese flag. <laughs> <laughs> What's up with the, the sirens below us? Anybody? Uh, they're, looking for Tom. they're looking for Tom, probably. I guess we got to get Tom back on the air. I know Jimmy doesn't want this. He well, was yelling before Let's get uh, Tom. when everybody went for a break, and I was sitting here. He came over. you got to get me back on the air for real with the headphones. No, none right. of that bullshit on the air. And he's bringing him by another stripper, I see, too. Oh, is he molesting or, her, too? we, we, we got to call them dancers, actually. For some some yeah. reason, something happened with the strippers thing. That they don't want to be called they strippers be anymore. They want to be oh. called exotic dancers. Wow, I'm seeing a girl walk down, and I am going to put these beads right in that cleavage. You're going to give it a shot, Anthony? I'm going to give it a shot. She's got to have uh, at least double D. Here we go. Just wobbling. Oh, that was really close. Who did that That's one? That's the girl I was going to get, you bastards. All right. You had the shot of the day, by the way. Anthony, oh. you threw beads so hard before that they ended up around the girl's neck and, yeah. neck and just spun around once and landed perfectly. I got a ringer. Oh, my God. What is this mess? What does she want? Here you go. You think, I'm going to throw him oh. a cup. 
There you go. Take she, the could, cup. she could drink her Geritol out of it. Yeah. Her husband's 80. Here, sir, here's an XM prostate for you. <laughs> let's, Hello. let's say hi to Tom from New Orleans. How you guys doing? Hey, Tom. You're not supposed to be touching the strippers, or the dancers, I should say. The dancers. Hey, the what's dancers. her name? Huh? What's, what's your name, baby? My name's Carly. Carly. She's, wow. She's absolutely beautiful. She is beautiful. Tom, what are you doing? baby. Get your hand off her. Is that it, Tom? She just got really baby, pissed off. Yeah. She got really, really no, pissed. He, he just girl. casually had his arm around her, and then he just felt her up. I know. He started grabbing her <laughs> breast. Tom, I you got to do that. You got to treat I the girl with some respect. That. I do. I do. She's dancing do. now up here. She's uh, She could shave her armpits a little bit. Oh. Wow, that's heroin chic, isn't it? Yeah. Tom, Tom, does she have a nice hiney? You got a great hiney. How does her hiney look? She won't show it. Let's just turn around. Look at that. Oh, Very Tom's nice. going to stick a thumb in it. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of plum. I've got Steve C. <laughs> what an awful proud. man he is. He's checking out all the girls. Yo, yo guys, this one ain't bleeding. What about <laughs> Norm? What about Norm, Oh, yeah. Oh, he's why does he have to touch? Why is he always <laughs> touching you, Jimmy? <laughs> Jimmy, <laughs> make, stop Jimmy, it. Jimmy, I love you. Jimmy, make my week and punch him in his face. Yo, I, I almost did when he licked the headphones before. Oh, yeah. I, but I knew make if I swing. did, Kenny would jump in and kill him. Make Kenny my week. kill him. You actually Thank were protecting him by not hitting him like that. Thank you, Jimmy. I will have fun with you tonight, buddy. He's patting you now. He's patting you. Why not? Tom, what's the rest of your night? going to be like? Um, I think uh, we're going to go out and have a couple of drinks with uh, What's Jimmy this we shit? <laughs> Not you. <laughs> Not you with your girlfriend now. Wow. Up. I got a vacuum and get divorced and then uh, got my girlfriend. Wow. Tom, you know, that was going on last time he was here. I know. Okay. Been? Well, you're coming. I'm not, I'm not hanging out with you. You're coming. Tonight. I'm not hanging out with Opie. you. Opie. When was the last time you were sober? Seriously, because this whole Marty thing Marty happens like wait, all year long. Hey, what? This morning at like 5 a.m. when I woke up. That was it. You yeah. drink every day, right? Yeah. Pretty much every yeah. day? Yeah. And and, Mar and Bourbon Street's like this almost every day, right? No. No, it's just wild every day. No. no. On the weekends, no. though? No? Yeah. It's just wild every, uh, on the weekends. Yeah. Right. What's the drug of choice for tonight? Uh, hallucinogenic. Can do a little shroom action? Well, <laughs> hey, Tom. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. I thought that was Tom. Uh, <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. Like, <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy. I like him Jimmy. on my pizza. I'm sorry. I, I was talking <laughs> in the back of the garbage <laughs> truck. <laughs> hey, I'm doing talking with Tom Brady. All right, thank you, Tom. Why don't we take right, the head from you, guys. Tom? Thank you. All right, yeah. away from Tom. Tom. You guys are great. Thank you for the great spot here at uh, Mardi Gras. You guys rock. You guys rock, you guys you rock and I hope we party tonight. All right, we'll uh, make sure we do not party with you tonight. But thanks for the offer. There. Yeah, uh, oh, good. His headphones are off. Yeah, we, we we're we're not going out with Tom. Absolutely not. He is. My my chick came up to me and said, Tom is so wasted. He came up to her and said, Hey, I taking mushrooms and I am so hallucinating. Right now? Yeah, so he, yeah, he's not even waiting till later. He's already uh, <laughs> taking stuff. Oh, he's giving you the finger. You can't hear anything. Club Soda Kenny, remove this guy. He's becoming a problem. Remove him right now. Look at if, Kenny. If he thinks that he's getting Kenny. me a Hummer, that's not happening. <laughs> I'd rather have Ope get me a Hummer by giving me Ant. <laughs> well, all right, deal. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, oh, oh, that guy's that guy's cup right there. Watch. Oh, oh that was, that was really so close. close. And, then, and then they all look up at me and they want to kill that. me. I had nothing to That's do with sweet. that. That's, I'm pointing. Wow. You don't know how to look away, dude. you got to look away when that happens. Take the quick glance. Get your joy out of it. It hit the cup directly, but... Oh. Uh, floor, the lady in the wheelchair. Lady in the wheelchair smoking a cigarette. She looked like she needed a uh, Opie and Anthony beer mug. That's, oh that's great. She's in a wheelchair, chain smoking. That's, chain smoking. that's really smart. That's fine. Why don't you throw down a couple of good feet? <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah, this is the end of the program, guys. This is what you get today. This is it. Right and tomorrow. Here. And tomorrow. It's yeah. going to be worse tomorrow. It's going to be louder. You know, and... and uh, you know what this shows us? That we were right last time we were here, that, that we should never broadcast from Mardi Gras. Oh, we never coming Remember back again. Remember three years ago, we left here, we had a good time, and we went, all right, we'll never do that we'll again. never come back. The broadcast stinks. It just it just doesn't make sense. I think it was fun today. No, yeah. we, we actually had a pretty good a time. A lot of fun. It's, it's just... Uh, 
it's, and it's only three hours. I it's mean, just, Jesus. It's just funny, though. Like, after ten minutes, everyone forgets that we're trying to do a radio show, and they're on the balcony trying to talk to us. They talk to you. To, trying to hand us drugs and Guys from the streets. Look, look at this guy. He's yelling at us, like, and they talk to you. Right, and we can't hear a word they say, and then they get, then they throw us the finger because we can't hear them. Yeah, like they're trying to carry on a conversation. We're, we're doing a show here. Right. We're doing a show, and, well, what wow. we think is a show. Hey, what's up? God, why we have a lot people, of fans here. Why are people so into cups? I never knew that was a thing here at Mardi Gras. People want free things. Is it just it, free stuff? Dude, if you were throwing colon cancer off the balcony, they'd be <laughs> running with their arms up to grab it. It's amazing. <laughs> colostomy bags. Oh, oh, here comes the Asian girl with a tree right throwing, through her. Throwing oh. used colostomy bags. Hopefully it would hit Tom in the mouth to make it smell better. <laughs> <laughs> Use it as mouthwash. He's oh. the only guy that would go to the dentist. The dentist would go, all right, rinse. No, just swallow it. Yeah. <laughs> you you should take it. some of these huge beads and floss with it. You know, Club Soda Kenny has a dentist joke, I think. Really? Yeah. I just, I, I've been reminded that uh, Club Soda Kenny might have a dentist joke. Kenny. All right. Kenny's uh, getting his headphones on. We Kenny. all love Kenny's jokes. Kenny taking his job very serious today. Yes. I like that. Doing it very like well. A lot. We haven't seen any uh, any uh, uh, flashing lately, Anthony. No. Girls are getting free stuff here is what it is. Kenny, do you have a dentist joke for in honor of Tom from New Orleans? I hate him. You, you oh, don't I like know. him at all, Kenny right? is really not no. liking it. Hey, Kenny, no. think of it this way. You know how you feel about Tom? Yes. That's how XM feels about you. <laughs> Isn't that awful? That is bad. Now that you is... can kind of see what type of hatred is going on there. Listen, I, I heard you talk about Michael Jackson the other day. May I make an observation? Certainly. Do you know what the difference between Michael Jackson and acne is? What? Acne comes on your face after you're 13. Wow. <laughs> Not bad. <laughs> Very good. What about the dentist joke in honor of Tom? Oh, you know what time a Chinaman goes to the dentist? What time? Tooth hurdy. <laughs> Tooth hurdy. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> Thank you. Kenny. Okay. All right. In wow, the drink. Dude, dude, it Anthony was through one direct hit right went right into the, the guy's, guy's drink. drink. And hit it one wow. one hit him in the face. The rest went right in the drink and he is pissed. That was a good he one. Is pissed. What a direct hit. Now he's throwing him back at the wrong side of the balcony. Good, that's fine. Wow. Well, broadcasting, that, I'm holding cups. Dude, that hit perfect. I'm glad I got a direct hit. Dude, that was it, that actually hit that actually went right through to Governor Connolly's back. <laughs> See, why did he just throw the beads at him while he was coming up instead of <laughs> waiting for him to turn on Elm? That was a tough shot. Hey, that balcony is getting a lot more action than we are as far as the girls flashing. Yeah, because we're not uh, really, we're not we're not asking for it. We're just kind of giving the girls stuff. You know what? I, I'm, I'm being handed notes. If this is not a hint, probably from Washington. Yeah. I, I'm, Ben's holding up big notes that just say, you could get off the air whenever you want. Oh, brother. <laughs> a big sign. You could get off whenever you want. Hint, hint. Yeah, uh, you've done a great job. Leave. Yeah, leave now. Uh, let's get Martini Steve on the air before we get out of here for the it's night. Martini Steve. Oh, an open cup walking by, and I missed it. A lot of people, it was funny, on the message boards, they're like, why are Opie and Anthony only broadcasting three hours instead of four? Now you know the answer to that question. Right. Martini Steve, you ready to drink tonight or what? Ah, uh, we'll see. We'll see. I have to... I've been, I've been very responsible for the last 48 hours. I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. Well, it wasn't 48 hours, but... Oh, uh, Super 36. Balls. Hold on. i got to bounce this thing. Bounce it hard, Opie. Don't hit anybody with it. Bounce Come it. Come on, bounce. Well, hit the roof. And there it goes. And point, point, down point. Down point, into point, the point. sleeves. You know that's coming back up to at us oh. from the balcony. Mar Steve, you're going to have a couple martinis tonight with us? Uh, we'll see. Maybe. Good. Maybe. Ants ping if he doesn't go back to the room. Oh, really? Oh, I'm out. It's on me. I'm going out. Oh, really? I'm out tonight. Fantastic. Fantastic, then. Oh, right, now right. they're looking at me. I was going to wing it into her drink. Why don't we wrap this mess up that we All call right. the Anthony program? Don't forget, we got we to gotta mention the, uh, the uh, Tara Patrick info one more time. That's all. Okay. You mentioned it there, Steve. All right. You got, Steve. You got the... Can I do it? Wow, is that is that a kid or a... Uh... Sarah Patrick, where? Is She's looking a... for a five-pound toy fox terrier. The, the father's thousand dollar reward for the dog. You can email her at Tara at clubterra.com. Where's she making her appearance tomorrow night, Steve? And yes, I am. She's hosting a Mardi Gras party tomorrow at Larry Flint's Hustler Club. 
Uh, Where's the hustling club? Yeah, yeah good. He can fucking dig a well he wants. Pardon my French. I'll throw him off his balcony if he doesn't shut up. Oh God. Oh. Why the anger, Steve? Why the anger? Why the anger? Oh, nothing. Nothing. I, I, I haven't thrown a cup or a goddamn beat at anybody. I've been running around like a chicken with its head cut off all day. That's all. <laughs> who are you? Uh, who are you mad at? Oh, nobody. Nobody. Not at all. Right. Anyway, I'm having a great time. Maybe I will drink tonight. Anthony, what I was asking, is yeah. that a kid or or like a uh, fidget? A fidget standing next to the big guy? Yeah, and then, I, then I pointed, and then the that guy who I, I believe is the father of that yeah. looked up and gave me the look of death. No, it's a... Um, it's a father and son. It is a son. Yeah. It kind of well, looks you think like it was a little Webster? midget. It looks like a, yeah, like a little Webster, actually. It's like a mini version of the father. Oh, he's leaving the kid alone. Oh, no, no. See, that's the mother there. All right. Why don't we wrap this up like we said about right. five times? It's oh, open Cowboy Anthony. hat. Cowboy hat. We'll do this all over again tomorrow. Live from uh, Bourbon Street in New Orleans. New Orleans. It's, it's, it's Mardi Gras. Yeah, and, uh, thanks.